Well, let's go. It's Monday at seven o'clock, which means it's time for some Starfinder. Hi, I'm Ian, the Dragonborn Bard, and I'll be your games master for this, the Starfinder campaign here on the Dragonborn Industries channels. This is episode 45, guys. Wow. Yeah, mine is obviously like the Christmas break and the week the other week that I had to take off. Mm -hmm. We've nearly been doing this a whole year, Madness. which is mental. Yeah, wild when we consider that um, the what? So I think the twenty second we're going to say is the first birthday, yeah. mm -hmm. which is. When did I come in? January. Yeah, so really not that far after. Yeah, the rest of twelve. Is. Yeah, Shit. still. Um, yeah, I think an incredible feat to have got this yeah, far with silly. our little podcast. Um, we're down a few players today. Jack has decided that MCM Comic Con London was um, really important to go to as a nerd, like the mecca for this country. Uh, so I hope he's had a great weekend. Um, I certainly know I like to see in the pictures. It was really nice. Um, and he's going to be coming back with some lovely little gifts for us. Um, oh, really? oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Got <laughs> <laughs> but we're also down at Townsend, so we have got uh, James, Steph, and Alex in tonight. Um, but I think that that's fine for where we are because I'll control Cast tonight. Uh, Calix is still in the archive cortex. We couldn't get Townsend in even if we wanted to at this point. So it's just the four players entering this Ooh. reservoir tonight. Yeah. But before we jump into all of that, let's go into some um, standard sell our soul stuff. Uh, I'm going to hand straight over to Steph. Yeah, uh, you've got a normal one from me tonight. Um, Didn't because... have time, eh? <laughs> well, A, no. And B, you know, I do these silly little bits, but um, every now and again I like to just genuinely put out that um, we are very, very lucky and honoured to be supported by Warrior Prints 3D, which is indeed your one-stop shop for all things 3D printed, be it cosplay items, miniatures, terrain, figures, collectibles, whatever you imagine you can dream of, Rich can print it for you. Most of the stuff that we use on the stream is printed by Rich, um, and uh, those of you who are followers of the channel will know that he does an amazing uh, painting up the Monster Manual with Ian. Um, we are so, so lucky to have him, um, and as part of this partnership, he is offering 10% off um, if you use the code to the stars um, on his Etsy store, which is www.warriorprints3d.etsy.com or slide over onto his Instagram at WarriorPrince3D. He is more than happy to talk about customs and if you've got an idea and you can't see it on the vast mass that is what his availability on Etsy, that guy can get it for you. So yeah, WarriorPrince3D, we love you Rich. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, I can't say enough good things about his prints. Uh, yeah, they are fucking, fucking incredible yeah. and if anybody's watching this, please go just check out his Instagram, check out his Etsy, um, spend some money, let him know that we sent you um, because they are great, great minis. Uh, moving quickly on to Roll and Play Press, uh, where we've got the code Dragonborn Ten, where you can get ten percent off your books over on the Roll and Play Press website. I've got the Fantasy Game Masters uh, toolkit in front of me. Ooh, shall we? Uh, we're looking at the contents here. Give me a D100. You've got a big D100 ready to go normally. Um, Ninety-six and down, basically. There's no. 56. 56, okay, so we are looking at ooh, Sweet Dreams. Aww. So let's go have a quick gander at Sweet Dreams. See what we can get onto. So uh, these are one of the many tables that you can find within these books. Uh, Sweet Dreams, giving your players dreams as they rest is a great way for them to feel more connected to their deity, foreshadowing future story events, or simply make them feel special. Uh, perhaps a spell or otherworldly effect has got your players dreaming. Here are some creative descriptions. Why don't we take a D8 from somebody? Whoop. Four. Four. You sit at a table. A huge feast of your favorite food is laid out across for you to enjoy. Another D8, please, from somebody. Eight. But in a mirrored room, you dance alone, your reflection smiling. Mm -hmm. um, from some the freaky ass <laughs> feast that someone's up. <laughs> just watching myself dance but, and that could be like, dance, I think okay. you know, maybe for a bard or maybe for somebody who is uh, uh, one of the uh... start doing that thing in uh, what is it Silence of the Lambs the whole ball tuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's just one of the many different um, 
tables that are in these books, and they are really good for filling out uh, loads of little things that you can have within your world, especially when your players come up with something that you weren't expecting to do in a session. Uh, so please go check them out. Use that code, DragonBall10, you'll get 10% off that. Uh, now, somebody's got to take over the Loki deck of many insults because... I'm here. Yeah, so if you grab that and pull from the top, and then uh, we'll go round. Who's getting it first? Go on then. Okay. Too bad you can't polymorph that horrible personality for your <laughs> face. <laughs> oh, I like it. Uh, yeah. me. You're about as useful as a one-legged orc in an ass-kicking competition. <laughs> James. Riddle me. <laughs> good. A farmer would keep you just for the shit. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, you gotta do me, mate. Yeah, I am. Not one single being on this world, living, dead, or combination of both, has ever liked you. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. Wow. That's uh, so mean. But I, again, the, I, I love that that is just the kind of things you can throw out as vicious mockery and stuff. Uh, so please go check out the Loki deck of many insults, along with so many more of their great uh, products that they have, like uh, the gift wrap stuff that you've got for the gift of giving adventure for Christmas, and uh, right the way through to like their battle map books, which we use here on the show. Uh, they're lovely, lovely people. Go check them out. Uh, James, do you like to talk about Twitch and subs? Yeah, so as part of your Amazon Prime subscription, you can get what is called a Twitch subscription. Uh, included in your monthly cost. It's absolutely free to use monthly. You can join us, join our community. You get ad-free viewing, as well as you get to use some of our custom emotes. Very uh, true. Do you know what some of those custom emotes are? One is the Rolling Dragon. Uh, your logo as it rolls. One's our logo as it rolls. It's the Dragonborn head. Um, one is a nat 20. It is. One is a nat 1. It is. The other yeah. one is mute, because mm -hmm. I often start the stream with the things on mute, <laughs> double-checking that's there. Um, <laughs> I did yeah. that because of this when we did two guys one cup. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to support our channel, show, and engage with us. So just hit that subscribe button as part of your Amazon Prime membership, and it costs you nothing just to show us a little bit of love. Yeah, exactly that. Um, and if you aren't doing that, and maybe you like the show, or you're watching this way down the line, and hopefully, you know, uh, you're like, hey, you know, what? I'd like a little slice of some Starfinder podcast action, or a little slice of Dragonborn Industries. Head on over to www.dragonbornistries.com. We can get things like these Stanley Cups or our merch and things like dice or healing potions, stuff like that. And what I'm great to hit see is that the 2024 healing potions are the same as the... few. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I've got so many I've made. Um, and we'll wait to see what uh, 2E Starfinder has in store for healing serums before I put them up. Um, but I really do like these Stanley Cups. I, I like them a lot. Um, I'm rocking a cold drink in mine tonight. Hot chocolate. Ooh. Cold chocolate. Oh, we've done like a switcheroo. Yeah. I'm going for the su sweet old co uh, Cocomel. Cocomel! <laughs> Steph, Ella. I tried a London fog for the first time. How the other day. was it? Excellent. There it was go. technically a Falmouth fog, but it's because I was in a cafe in Falmouth. Oh, very nice. nice. Yeah. There you go, I like a London fog. Just mm. citrus tea, really. Yeah. I'm just all about it. Or love Lady um, Grey. Yeah, oh, Lady Grey, uh, no milk on a sunny afternoon. Oh, yeah. a, lo a lovely, delicate bone china teacup. Got to be. Of lemon. Oh mm. my god. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some peasants on the fire. <laughs> Away we go. So Edith's going to die, right? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that turbine's getting turned back on when you go through. Um, so yeah, feel free to go check out the merch um, if you're so inclined. But if you can't spend money on us and you don't want to sub up on Twitch because you're using that sub somewhere else, um, just tell a friend. Just. If you enjoy what you see, just say, hey, I've got a friend who's a nerd. Maybe they'd like to hear about the podcast. Because the best thing you can do for us is just tell a friend. And hopefully they'll tell a friend. And then they'll tell a friend. And they'll tell a friend. And one day, we'll be billionaires sitting in this room laughing at each other. Going, ha, 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 Money fight. If not, I'll put a poll and I'll dance for you all. Um, no, I just think um, it'd be nice to get more reach and if we can get you know, anybody else to enjoy the show like we do then that'd be fantastic so just tell a friend uh but without further ado i suppose we jump into this week's episode of farfinder <laughs>
right buttons. <laughs> After deciding that they wish to sneak into the secret tower, our crew envoy once called home, four of the crew make their way into the roof of the ring and try and find their way around the maze of maintenance tunnels and station oxygen recyclers and reserve water reservoirs. But the crew find themselves at one of these water tanks and believe that they somehow are sat above the pillar that hides the Yosoki housing. Yosoki, the Hastoki housing. But at least for TJ's batch. The crew rush around, finding random slivers terminals and other factors that lead them to the thought that maybe the water in the tower has been cut off, yet Jenkins, a fellow Hastoki known to TJ, when asked if they have running water, claims they cannot get to a tap at this point. Either our crew Technomancer applies a technomatic augmentation upgrade to their body, you try saying that, <laughs> and dives in trying to swim down into this large water source. However, on getting halfway down, finds that an underwater current nearly sucks them into a fast moving, heavy grade turbine. But luckily, stealing their resolve, Ida manages to recenter themselves and swim up and out of the current. The crew go back over their steps and find a turbine control terminal and deactivate the turbines ready for attempt two at swimming down into this reservoir. And this is where we're gonna jump into today's session. The four crew members take the plunge into this ice cold water as you, your bodies almost freeze up in shock for that brief second. But again, you steal your body and begin your descent down towards those lights where those sluice gates are. I hand over to you, the players. As you begin to swim, what would you like to do? So we're swimming down into That's the... up to you. I'm going to say that you've just jumped in, mm -hmm. but... Um, yeah, I think we're swimming down, yeah. looking for the lights, um, aren't we, to see if... Because three was off when we went in before, mm -hmm. so I think aim for three as a starting point and see what we can find. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, perception checks from the top while you're in the water, please. Oh, bless, bless you. you. Oh, sorry, I tried to uh, avoid that one. Bless you. Uh, from all of us. Yes. Oh, and that one. Oh, no. For an eight. 21. 21. 25. 25, okay. Uh, Roos, maybe there's something like your feathers get pushed up as you like jump in and your environmental protections kick in. Uh, and maybe you're like a second behind the other two where like the bubbles and the water like disturbs. But for you two... Um, Body's built for buoyancy. Yeah, and um, for you two, you see somewhere down beneath, you see this like green and red glow of uh, lights off in the distance. And as the water starts to settle, you begin to see like pinpricks down beneath you over from the right hand side, green, green, red, green. Um, after the water settles, this can be pointed out to you easily enough, Roos. And um, yeah. Swim. Can we swim. talk to each other? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we've got our yeah. protections on. Cool. Are we heading for number three? Yeah, Let's do it. Worth of shots. Um, just be careful. Even though these turbines are off, just keep an eye out for others. Yeah. Watch your back. However, if you guys are starting to swim down, mm -hmm. we do yeah. have to make athletics checks to swim. Yeah, uh, so you're swimming in Starfinder. Obviously, you don't have a swim seat, so you need to be a DC 10. It's yeah. a, an easy speed, um, an easy speed, an easy swim. Um, so first check. 15. Everybody above 10. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Way above 10. OK, round one. It's going to take 10 rounds of so 10 successful checks to swim down there, basically. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I got plus 11. Oh, so you automatically yeah. pass. <laughs> so you you cannot fail this, which means that you actually, if somebody gets in trouble, you're a good good aim. Maybe it's just big bird wings. Yeah, yeah. Start so rolling. Um, oh, that one. That one, okay. So let's just do it round by round. How far are you okay. guys in? Cool. Um, so I've had um, two. two successes, one failure. I've had. Oh, no, actually. Then pass. a fail, then a pass. Jeff. Sorry, it was three passes. So three. So currently, as it stands, um, you know, TJ starts swimming down on the head. We see this like hamster. <laughs> uh, Ida like looks like he's beginning to struggle a little bit, but then like starts pulling his way. I imagine are you staying in front? Are you staying behind? Are you staying I'll in the middle? I'll stay behind. Yeah. Um, so if anybody gets drifted off, I'll just. Yeah, and what you can do is you can offer the aid then to uh, yeah. both of them as you're like helping like move them along in the water. Cool. So you, because Roos has got plus eleven, you automatically get the aid, which is oh, fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
we have two successful checks from both those three successful checks and two successful checks. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go. This movie interrupts you just to see if we can get there on check four. No. You get the aid, remember? Is that the, so it'd be with advantage, is it? Or? Plus two. Plus two. Uh, no. No? Okay. So this is where like he's starting to struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to try again? Yeah. Yeah, pass. Okay, cool. So at this point, like, Bruce manages to catch everybody up. Now I'd like to start doing this together. So we're like three in, number four. Pass. Pass. Number five. Pass. Pass. Number six. Pass. Fail. Okay, cool. At this point, I think for Ida, it's like, um, the, the memories of like this, it's around here somewhere. And you can see he's like looking around. Mm -hmm. Can I have perception checks from everybody, please? I need to roll Kaz's up as well, actually. Uh, I don't think Kaz is going to struggle here. It's that seat that's cursing me. I've rolled really well in this seat so far. <laughs> There's the campaign, guys. Because I like it. Uh, let's bring up Kaz's sheet just to be safe. Kaz Umbla. Hi, He's got a plus nine, so basically he has to roll a... I, he can't fail it. Yeah. If, even if he rolls a one, he cannot fail it. So uh, again, with you, he's just like helping bring it up. Um, but at that point, you're like, this is it. And you're like, for a minute, you feel the current of the guys behind you and mm -hmm. TJ in front of you. And you're like, oh, yeah, here it comes. And, and then yeah. like, you all look around. What was the perception checks, please? 10. Filthy, dirty little 20. Oh, cock three times. Uh, 19. 19. Cool. Uh, and Kaz is like up in the fucking. Thousands. <laughs> With a 19, he rolls a 33. Yeah, uh, Jesus uh, Christ. Plus 14 in his perception. Uh, Damn. Scenes of the future. He is uh, <laughs> stacked in that one. Um, and like you see, like where, because you've seen it in this terminal that you've like been in, you turn them off and you just see those like, they're probably still slowly just coming mm. to a, a halt, but like, yeah, they're, they're big and. Um, what I, I think I said something like 10d20 last time. It's not, it's actually 10d10's worth of damage. It's a level nine trap, basically. Uh, sorry, level, uh, yeah, it's level nine trap. Mm -hmm. So it'd be 10d10 plus five if you'd have failed at the save, which is pretty brutal. It is, yeah, just to give you the mechanics on that one. But um, yeah, you guys like in this moment, and Kaz is like, you good? All good. Okay. Uh, DC stays the same. There's no current now, so you can just carry on down. Cool. Uh, these two, obviously, Kaz and Roos are just like, come on, children. you just seen pass. this massive pass. dispersal of water as my wings just go. Uh, you get the extra aid from Kaz as well, so that's another plus two on top of that, yeah. so that's yeah. plus four. So you shouldn't really be failing this, but let's just double check, see if anybody has trouble, either. <laughs> A pass, thank you. Yeah, that's one. Another, 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 uh, yeah, pass. pass. Yeah. Three more to go. Pass. Pass. Yeah. Pass. pass. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. Not got natural one, but I just make it by the skin of my teeth. Nice. Oh. Just got a ten. And that's what the A feature in Starfinder is all about. So, and it's, as you're coming to like that last bit, you'll st it's darker down here, but these lights that are a good 40, 50 feet apart from each other, you can see them, and they are lights that in that are on uh, the, the tops of hatches, and um, you can see that they are about 20 feet by 20 feet squares, and they slide in and out of position. Um, you are coming down, uh, do you have an, an idea of which one you'd like to come down on top of? Because obviously you have like, as far as the numbers we're aware, it was like one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. but the terminal you're at was like one, two, three, four. So you think yeah. you come at it from the top rather than from... Sure. Mm -hmm. We were aiming for the red light. We were, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, give me a perception check. Kaz hears him, I'm pretty sure he fucking nails it. Eleven. Thirteen. Eight. Kaz with a fucking thirty. This <laughs> way. <laughs> Actually, twenty-six. Um, he is the first one to like swim down in this uh, moment, and he like lands and like turns himself the right way, um, and then begins to like move some silt off the top of the. Um, the hatch where this uh, just beneath where this light is, and you can see like where this red light is. It like shines over black uh, lettering on top of this like gunmetal panel, uh, and it has uh, in common the number three on it. Um, you can see that it is in place and then sunk into the actual uh, floor, so it's flush with the floor. So you can see this is completely sealed, uh, and uh, you can give me an engineering check. Is there, who else is trained in engineering? Uh, yeah. 
got a green dot. Uh, as long as you have a plus in it, that's not just your modifier. So I think it's like a trained skill and Ooh. then a ranked skill. Oh, nat 20. Ooh. Good, Plus waste them now. 13. 13. Dirty 20. Awesome. Anything from the tush? I've got a 13. A 13. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a loaf of cows, but <laughs> is it? Um, <laughs> what's his engineering? I don't think it's actually as high as yours, is it? Uh, mine is 13. His is 12. Ha! <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, in the water. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, clearly, as it's sunk, it's sunk him in, in that position, obviously it creates a, like a hermetic seal, mm -hmm. which is designed to stop any kind of leakage, any water. Very much like a starship seal, like an mm -hmm. airlock seal, but this is designed to like with the pressure of the water on top of it as well, it down. holds it in place, like almost like a submarine lid. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is a, you know, some kind of mechanical device pushes this up and across. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but you see this like locked, large 20 by 20 square sluice gate with a number three on it. How do we get in? I just kind of, can we talk in the helmets? Is it like sealed that you can talk? So this is where we have to decide what your environmental protections are like. Yeah. Because some people it'd be like a tube into their mouth. Other mm. people it's like a, a sealed force like, field. I was gonna say with mine it's kind of like in the helmet, yeah. just kind of. Yeah. Cool. Likewise, it's the yeah. bubble. Yeah. Sweet. Um, uh, then yes. I can make it go boom. My problem is, if it's empty the other mm. side, we're going to. And Kaz is like that. That's also the problem is that we don't know which one of these four gates might lead to the tower mm. if they do at all if we go blowing it is it a case that this goes into town you mentioned a catastrophe last time do we mm. end up flooding the tower mm. or is this you know we don't know if they have water or not okay. we don't know why this one's closed or where this one connects to we could literally blow it and it's the emergency valve and we just go flying out into mm. space can i check my compad has anything come back from geeky uh, not in the few um, you know, five ten minutes. Uh, they're struggling because of that role to get into yeah. any of the system access. Um, yeah. Uh, for now, count them out. Cool. Um. Is it a good idea to blow it up whilst we're in the water? I. The only way of me exploding really? it is me being here. I won't be able to get out quick enough. And the other way is to speak up is to have somebody in here and then we start playing with those levers mm. or we try and find another terminal or something that tells us because so far the terminals we've met have been engineering ones that turn things on and off not anything that gives us information on diagnostics on how things run on how things go Who had the highest perception check there? It was Kaz, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Um, it's quite large, though, that's the thing. No. Um, yeah. He looks to you all and it's just like, we either start exploring all of these one by one, or we, we... I mean, which one was the closest one that we thought to the tower? And I need to find the map that I... Oh, that you guys wrote out. Uh, they wrote out the ones that you were uh, blind made. Well, I guess time is against us, mm, so we don't want to dilly too much. No. Or dally either. Oh, where I come from is dilly. <laughs> they say dally where you're from? <laughs> yes. That's silly. <laughs> silly and dilly. <laughs> but I, I get it. Yeah, we're... it was different. How have I lost that? <laughs> Massive white. Marco. <laughs> Put it in the rest of Jack's things. Ooh. So I'll hand you guys. Obviously. A jack map. This here. Now, obviously it's a bit of a weird jack map. You don't have a blueprint. You can only really map down where you've been and what you think is around. And if I go to this one here. And move the map cap. So when we went up that ladder, that took yeah. us to the hatch, which turned off the turbine. Yeah. So, so we came up this side. So this was the the tur. Oh, hello, head. Look, this was the turbine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do. So I bring this this way. Yeah. And then I'll point out what you remember and stuff like that. So there is actually a. Um, 
big hexagon mm -hmm. that you're in. Mm -hmm. And what you've worked out is that these tunnels must run parallel to the hex. So all these 45s must be it going around mm -hmm. those corners. So you've obviously had this terminal, which is here, mm -hmm. that you've been into and looked at the turbines, which are all across this northern wall. Mm -hmm. You've then come back all the way up around and jumped in over here and have head, headed down to number three. Mm -hmm. So you've got one, two, three, four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As it currently stands, you think somewhere between three and four is the tower. But there's also this unexplored yeah, whole area around it. Obviously, there is another ladder that goes down here and another ladder that went down here. Um, but, yeah, I, I think one of the things that Kaz remembers is that like there must be either emergency evacuation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there must be a control unit not just um, a case of going turbines on, sluice gates open or closed. There must be something that regulates the amount of water in here, gives out readings. Do we need to go back up to the surface and see if we can find a unit? I think that's wise. Being down here and opening these gates, you, you don't mm. know where it's going to go. You could go out to the other side of the station. Mm -hmm. Is it worried? We're just going to lose time. One of us stay down here. See what happens. Any movement. My worry there, Bruce, is that if we do something that hits the water mm. eject. No, I ain't volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> I think stick together is the best plan. Mm. Well, uh, up to the uh, surface, to, yeah. let's, let's yeah, um, not dilly or dally. A lot easier to swim up. Um, with these two pushing you, I'm not going to make those checks again. Um, I was just going to sit here rolling 10 checks every time. Um, <laughs> But it's just you're losing time. This mm -hmm. is the thing, and you know, <sighs> swimming back up, and it's it's hard work. Mm. Um, luckily, those environmental protections that uh, underwater breathing allows for lack of pressure as well, because 150 foot down is like being in a submarine <laughs> dive tank. Um, and eventually, you like breach the top of the water, and yeah, still apart from the ripples that you guys create, oddly calm in here now. Um, so there's a ladder. But this side and one on the other, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, should we start with the closest first? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Head for the ladder closest. Mm -hmm. So the one, because you obviously coming up around here, yeah. so you're going down to this one here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you make your way over dripping wet and eventually see a ladder that drops down. Uh, it doesn't drop down that far, it looks to drop down about 20 or so feet. And you can see that there is like a light down there, it's not pitch black. Mm -hmm. um, Kaz is like, I don't mind going first. Um, I don't expect to find any trouble up here. Um, runs down the ladder. Um, I, do you guys follow? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, so uh, you enter into a, uh, a rectangular room where um, the first thing that you see is uh, on the wall, same side as the ladder you come down, is a long tunnel. Yay! <laughs> uh, it's about 15 foot long and there are many different uh, diagnostics reading out on it. Some of them are like um, actual like pressure gauges, mm -hmm. other ones are um, little uh, but like bar chart readouts mm -hmm. of like oxygen levels and also um, things like water in, water out. Uh, engineering checks from anybody or computer checks depending on which ones you would oh, like I'm to do if you're computers. trained. Kaz will do engineering. Oh. Oh. 19 plus 16 is 35. Excellent. 26. Engineering? Yeah. Cool. 28 computers. Okay, cool. So the engineering boys, which is Kaz and Bruce, uh, they're like, yeah, this is clearly the control node for this particular reservoir. And what you can tell is that it's actually the control node for one, water recycling uh, and uh, distribution into this quadrant of the free, of the free markets and the, the ring. It's also into two separate uh, air recycling uh, units, so oxygen recyclers, and um, yeah, those big turbines which are, are now reading us off, and um, yeah, the um, readings that you get basically signify that things have been stopped here now because you guys have turned off um, the turbines, and um, there are now starting to be a few like blinking lights based on like what we come up now for the computers is like are you wishing to purge are you uh doing maintenance and it's like things start like cropping up on the data terminals like you know obviously like turbines powered down mm -hmm. 
and then got like almost like that fallout yes no like yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah basically is what's coming up yes slash no exactly that um but with the computer check what you see is that um this obviously functions as uh a water distribution unit for those recyclers and for mm -hmm. uh, the areas around here. Uh, what you see is where those sluice gates go. Um, so the sluice gate one mm -hmm. uh, dissipates off and heads towards um, sewage recycling of, uh, and I need my map of the station because I had it written down on there. So uh, that particular one goes to um, uh, sewage and uh, distribution uh, and waste management for Little Akaton. Sluice so 2 is um, basically for the free market. Sluice so 3 is the emergency dump. Ooh. <laughs> so, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> so 4 is the emergency dump. Oh. Why would they need two? It's a lot of water, but it's open. Give me a perception check. Sixteen. Seventeen. Dirty twenty. That's twenty, and I will give one to Kaz. Um, <laughs> Kaz up there with like a thirty something. Uh, there is a piece of paper, uh, Happy. taped basically to mm. the top of the terminal above, like the slimmest controls. Um, New orders keep Slivers Gate 4 open. Run off through the pillar. Mm. New directives will be given soon. And give me a... Let's pick an associated skill here. Give me a physical science check. If anybody's trained in it. Yeah. Trained. Nope, I am not. 17. 17. 30. 30. Kaz with a 23. Um, the paper's quite old now and it's quite damp and that it's like curled up around the corners and like this note's been there a while. Mm -hmm. um, a year, two years maybe. Mm. No, it's been here a, a, a little while it's uh, claggy like your mum sorry TJ, I don't know where that came TJ, from you've changed sorry. since you got back with Linda you've I'm changed very, very stressed <laughs> it's okay look we're, we're going to rescue so you say it's old and claggy yes uh, it, it's saying new orders keep the sluice gate open run off through the pillar just you're from here around it. Does any of that mean more to you? Couldn't be more patronising if you tried. <laughs> this fucking guy! Yes, I mean, I live in a pillar. I literally live in a pillar. You've seen it. Just asking. God. Didn't know if there was something called the pillar. All right, dally guy. <laughs> From now on, I'm strictly Dilly's only. <laughs> wow. And um, give you a little Noah guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, I mean, so what do we do here? I think it's four seems to be the mm -hmm. entryway. Do we can we find a way to get ourselves into it? As I've the... got onto the bit, is there a way to go to the maintenance to see if there's any more sort of almost what I'm looking for is like the sort of you know on the old school computers where you used to have like the digital feeds like where water to be running to from almost like the schematic sort of thing. Uh, so actually, yeah, you can pull it up, and the pillar is supposed to have a large pipe that goes through the centre of it that then leads to the exterior of the space station. Mm -hmm. That's what it's showing. Mm -hmm. Which, if you combine mm. that with your knowledge of the tower, mm -hmm. that's no longer accurate. Mm -hmm. And then give me, and this is like a wild card here, give me a sense motive check. Oh, okay. Oh. All of us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. Another dirty 20. 23. Cool. Uh, I think for Ida, you're like... Huh? Like, you're used to diving into things, but it's not like the schematics of a fucking space station. You're like, this is fucking not my job. Um, <laughs> just there, like, turning the screen like... <laughs> yeah, it's like... What the fuck is that? Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's like having one part, like one blueprint for part of an engine, and you're like... 
I don't fucking know. But for you guys, it's actually the, the paper note that really stands out. Because in a time and place where everything is done via a message or a compad mm. or something, why is there a piece of paper here? Why is it handwritten and stuck to the machine rather than being like, well, let's just implement that if that's an order that's come in? No one's signed it. No. Okay. Um, I will take a snap of it, though, being um, handwritten, because that might be useful in yeah. the future. Mm -hmm. um, Can we get Gigi to uh, verify handwriting or anything like that? some analysis. Analysis. I'll whap it off to the ship with that message. Like, whatever you, whatever you can, Gigi, no rush. Don't, don't even sweat. Uh, not overly my area of expertise. You'd be better off giving that to the data files. Swinging it over to historians <laughs> and I'm like, hey, hey, just... Uh, just wondering if, if you've got any cross-referencing of the handwriting on this note. That would be really swiggity swag. Uh, no rush, no biggie. Come straight back, Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fuck Jenkins. We will look into it. Cheers. Um, but yeah, uh, Kaz is like, I see where you're going with this, though, with like, you know, what's in there. Obviously, we know that there's something, in there's people in that pillar, and this is saying there isn't. And obviously that note says keep that one open which means mm. they want water going down there and what's supposed to be what we can see here is the secondary dump then that's obviously been re reworked reworked um the question is how do we follow this down because i've not seen many any kind of starship that has anywhere it keeps water have an access point from underneath it mm. that's big enough for people to climb in mm. true we've got to go all the way outside and try and go from underneath mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean as we go through the pipes we can't squeeze out a shower head but also <laughs> we can cut our way through but we run the risk of obviously then pouring water into that tower. Mm -hmm. Which, given that they're locked in, would not be ideal. Yes. Could be fun, though. Stop it. <laughs> Could be real fun. <laughs> this is the best TARD machine I've ever been in. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do? I mean, TJ, we're... You said we're on a timer, mm. and um... at this at this point, I feel that if we can't feasibly find a way in like this, mm -hmm. hell, I'm at the point just going down and trying to get through the front door. But what if? Yeah. I mean, we could dump the water and then go down, Don't but that's a whole area of the station that we're taking water away from is my other concern mm -hmm. I don't want to do damage unto others and have them have something to put against the Starfinders, against the Stoki say well look at the damage they've done mm. and it's not just that, it's the people mm -hmm. lives, lives that go affected. with it we do, if we do this we do it the right way mm. not the shitty way mm. shitty I'm from the shitty <laughs> so if we go through the front door, is it? It's guns blazing. Mm. Well, we're good at that. Yeah. So you particularly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Kaz would point out that um, the room that you're in, which is here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a corridor that leads, and he recognises the light, and he's like, "Yeah, I didn't run down here." Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, we can go back that way and we can find our way back to the ladders and then jump down from the access point. I mean, mm. obviously... Um, Is it worth us checking the other ladder just to make sure we've covered every basis? In case we see a point that we can get in and yeah. uh, then to serve his hatch. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, run away. It yeah. doesn't seem to hurt. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, the ladder that you've gone down is only about 20 foot, so you can, like, yeah. climb back up, you know, run all the way across this massive hex, uh, and you start dropping down. Uh, this one goes down about 50 or so feet. Um, 
roughly in line with where you think some turbines were. Mm -hmm. um, and you start uh, going across a corridor mm -hmm. until you enter another um, terminal room. Uh, and if everybody gives me who is trained in engineering or computers, which I think is everybody in some way, shape, or form. Oh, cows rolling fucking rocks at the moment. 22 computers. 34 in computers. 14 engineering. Yep, uh, Kaz in his 30s as well with the engineering. Uh, this is the start of the, well, the terminal uh, conduit for the second uh, oxygen recycling okay. unit for this area. Um, knowing that there was one that went off this way, mm -hmm. and now there's one that's this way, yeah. that must be the secondary one. Mm -hmm. Okay. There have been tunnels that lead off from there, feel free. <laughs> Let's not wander too far, don't yeah. they? Um, It's your lead, TJ. Mm. I don't like that. Um, how you are our captain. Oh, captain, my captain. Stop. TJ Landerskog. Stop it. <laughs> I killed at the ginger convention. Um, <laughs> All of them. Every soulless <laughs> motherfucker in there. We'll have none of this. Uh, how long realistic was it? <laughs> none of this, none of you. None of this. No, 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 Stop no, no, no. it. Uh, realistically, how long is it going to take us to get back and through? So, I mean, you know, at a sprint, yeah. running back through these corridors, we're talking another 15, 20 minutes. Then how are you... Obviously, Roots can fly. Mm -hmm. um, getting down. So, you know, how else are you guys getting down? So that's the other thing. So, obviously, like, now we know that the auto grappler is... Um, the capacity on it is actually the amount of, like, winching it can do. Yeah. Um, Kaz can reform that, so his is full. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got 100 foot... Well, he's got 40 foot of that, actually, hasn't he? Because he yeah. only bought 40 foot of cable line. Um... But then also, he can't do the suckers thing. Yeah. He could just fall 100 feet. Let's do it. Could I carry TJ? So you can, but it will be an athletics check to fly. I can attempt it. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you put um, TJ on your back and try and like basically like glide Strap down. In, kid. Uh, oh. A couple of beers. The ace, uh, the DC <laughs> of this is 15 because it's just, it's a more difficult. Although you've got a fly speed, it now becomes a difficult fly because you've got a creature on your back fucking with your aerodynamics. Okay. That is a 19. You could fly TJ down. Woo. I'm going to quickly look through Kaz's stuff because um, it could be interesting. Uh, I actually read that wrong. It's Ooh. yeah. It's not up and down. It is just across and on the floor. Okay. Ooh. Features and traits. Suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. <laughs> it's literally in the strict traits. Suspicious. Because <laughs> they're not seen that often. Ooh. I wasn't wrong. Trousers. I walked down. Trousers <laughs> just on my back, like. I've not seen them in years. Okay, um, he's like, I can drop the 40, but that's about it with the, the auto grappler that I've got. Mm. Um, I've got a grappler with 60. I mean... Double whammy. Yes, but it's attaching them to each other or yeah. trying to find something else to Batman this off. Um, <laughs> got you, Could I fly back up and give... If you would like to try. Yeah. Okay, okay so go for Kaz or Ida first. Kaz first. Okay, now these guys are. Big. Sorry. <laughs> these guys are a lot. Yeah. Better. Okay. Um, so Kaz first, yeah? Yeah. So the DC on this one, it's not going to be as hard. Edis is going to be 20. Mm -hmm. Kaz will be 17. Okay. Come on. It's an athletics check. Oh, that is a 21. No, sorry. That is a 21. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you can, Kaz is like, only if you're short. He looks strange in this moment. Um, oh, it's the flying thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it not like flying? Kaz, Suck it up, boy. Kaz used to have wings. And, oh, shit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, in this moment, you're like, oh, shit, yeah, Kaz used to have wings. And he is just like, okay. And he like, how's this? Uh, and like, you see him like trying to be careful of where your wings are and stuff. And then he's like trying to grab you around your waist. It's a bit awkward. But eventually you manage to like fly him down. Mm -hmm. And then you start coming back up for yeah. Ida. All right, big man. You ready? Yes. Hold tight. 20. That is a 18. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Resolve point? 
Not really, unless there's something that in the resolve point says you can do something. Okay, so uh, let's double check flying in Starfinder because this could be a big 100 foot drop. Fuck. Um, okay. Now, would Bruce now count as transport? And could either use a resolve point to become a boarding expert. No. <laughs> when you attempt, can I? Att oh, no, I can't attempt to aid it because I, um, with athletics, I am definitely not proficient in that. I've just got the little white mark. Under yeah, your flying, mm -hmm. does it say what type of um, flying you have? Is it like an average, a perfect? Uh, let me find. Or clumsy. Okay. Average maneuverability. Bollocks. Mm -hmm. So, creatures with a clumsy maneuverable take a minus pa eight penalty to acrobatic checks to fly, while those with a perfect maneuverability gain a plus eight to those checks to fly. Creatures with average, the default, neither gain a bonus nor take a penalty. Uh, when you're flying at the start of each turn, choose a primary direction of the round, including up or down. You can move, like, yada, yada, yada. Uh, okay. So, we're going to fall 50 feet. What about... Solarian, gravity, all that shit. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think how we're going to do is we're going to fall 50 feet, and I'm going to let you make the check again. Okay. You're still trying to beat a 20. All right. Different die. What do I want to die? Let's have a stick with it. Come on. Yes. Come on. Ooh, 22. Okay. As he goes to get his D6s and puts them away. Um, it's all cool. It's nice. all cool. Like, you guys Ooh. are brought down by Bruce. <laughs> and then, like, Eda gets on, and I don't think you're ready for seven, eight foot of goblinoid. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of tech there, and he weighs a lot. Yeah. Uh, and you just drop. It's like one of those, like, Flight the Phoenix, like, ah! Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> just pulls up for the last minute grazing yeah. across the floor it does, and like, so you get to that 50 foot mark and it's like you manage to like Aah! and like you can see like the solarian kind of like gravity and stuff like starting to like channel yeah. around him as then like <laughs> like you catch the air and it just <laughs> as like and like at this point like, vomit I'm, I'm going to do an average check I'm going to roll twice and I'm going to take the average for the that's a three and an eight so Average of about five for the local populace who don't seem to notice. <laughs> <laughs> As um, you guys start making your way down, Sorry. you land back on the street, probably a little bit worse for wear. Um, and yeah, um, you are probably, you know, 40 foot away from the tower at this point uh, on its opposite side to the door. Um, yeah. So. We got it. One second. <laughs> Thank you. Just wipe right. it off my sleep. <laughs> so we've got, I say, we've got two choices. We can go straight through the front door, mm -hmm. um, or there is, as I mentioned previously, the monorail. <laughs> and I wonder if there's an access that we could get behind if we still wanted to be a little sneaky. Has anybody tried the door? Should I try the door? <laughs> um, I should probably try the door. I'm gonna kind of like saunter my way over and just act as if I'm like sort of just leaning against it, you know. So really perception nice check, and it's a very low DC. Okay. Um, oh, Eleven for an, uh, on a natural one. <laughs> no, it's oh, a DC okay. is five because on the door it says out of order. Oh, okay. Um, and obviously it's written like station maintenance plaque mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, yeah. Um, you can lean on the door. Door seems lean fine. Door, and I'll just pop my hand. Where I would usually kind of go to gain entry. Door opens. Shit! <coughs> <laughs> 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 um, and then, like you look around, you see like this Yosoki like looking at you from across like where this meat vendor stand is, and he just nods. Um, I'll sort of like I'll keep keeping my hand on it and be like, God, 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 God. Okay. <laughs> you guys dart inside. Um, <sighs> the home sake. sweet home. It really is, isn't it? Camera on. Camera on. Okie doke. Just need to bring something up. How you feeling there, kid? 
just this sort of shaky hand. You're heavier like... than you look. I mean, you look heavy, but. <laughs> Jeez, old man. I'll find my feet. <laughs> They're on your ankles. That strength weighs a lot, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the compliment. You were magnificent, Alex. Bruce. Yes. Well, thank you, Could you put Bruce. that, please, at the very end of the corridor closest to you? Here? Yep. Ooh. You stand it up. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm going to hand you guys, just for the sake of it, some minis. Okay. Closest to you, mm -hmm. on that corridor there, yeah, that's where the doorway is on this floor. That's where we're entering into. Yep. Entering mm -hmm. here. Uh, feel free to place your minis in those four squares. And then we'll describe. Where do you want to be? Uh, I'd probably be behind you because I can probably go on the other side of you. Kaz would be at, uh, either at the front or he would be. Uh, so give yourself the four squares right at the back as if you just yeah, entered. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, what I've realised I've done is I haven't given the two foot of space at the front there. So there would be a, a corridor line okay. at the very front yeah. as well uh, as you stand on this intersection. So, You enter inside and the door closes behind you. And what was once a hive of activity, especially during like wake up hours and coming home from work hours. And it's now after your foray, you know, we're talking like midday. So it would be kind of quiet anyway, but this corridor is dimly lit. You see it's almost like an abandoned apartment block. The long narrow hallways are like, slightly rusted and peeling and like the lights overhead start to flicker Excuse me. casting unsettling shadows the air is thick and humid and this silence is broken only by the occasional drip of unseen water not to be rude is this what it's always been like we got no, it's absolutely not usually like this, sir. How long have you been gone for? To, for it to... Not that long. Give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, 28. 28. Cool. Um, you look left and right, because obviously there would be a, a, a long corridor along that front bit there. Uh, and you can see that like each compact apartment, which was once very efficient in its design, um, some doors are like open, some are closed. It feels very claustrophobic all of a sudden in here. I don't like it. For you guys, for the layout, I'm just going to bring up a map on um, on here because um, for anybody who might want to see the layout of the floor is this. And um, each one of these blocks is represented by this here. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see where the doors would be. There's three doors on either side, yeah. and then you know what the rooms are like on mm -hmm. each side of that. So yeah. each one of these blocks has six, uh, has nine, hang on, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six rooms on it. Mm -hmm. So there is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks mm -hmm. of rooms, six rooms per block. And it just seems deserted in here. And like it's now been like, yeah, not maintained in the slightest. I'm gonna look to you and just be like, well, let's not dilly. And then I'll just nod you Dillions forward. for suckers. Yeah, um, I would like to try and lead, um, heading towards one of the tunnels that will lead, lead upwards. Cool, so on this particular floor, you know that the first tunnel is here. Yeah. So in, uh, yeah, uh, as you begin to like move your way forwards. Um, yeah, don't worry about moving my squares, just um, at the moment, you know, get to the first intersection. Mm -hmm. And you look left and right, and are you just heading straight to the tube? Yes, I am. I am going to be keeping a lookout for anything, any signs of life. But I think TJ realistically knows that it's probably too late for this floor. Okay, uh, give me a perception check. All of us, or just yeah, you can absolutely all make a perception check. While this is going, I've kind of got detect magic on, yeah, just kind of pulsing every now yeah. and then just to send out a little signal, Sweet. see if I can get anything. Nothing so far, 
That's my fourth dirty 20 of the day. Ooh, 29. 12. Okay. Uh, got that. When looking at this particular area of the map, you guys start looking down the corridors and everything. Uh, over here is like a different texture to the mm-hmm. corridor. Um, yeah. It's just something like... Oh, is that, sorry, over here? Uh, between those two doors mm-hmm. uh, and the opposite doors, uh, there is just like an area of about 10 foot where it's just like a different texture to the wall, ceiling and floor. That's right. very strange. Mm-hmm. Making sure environmental protections are on. Mm-hmm. Um, part of me wants to know, but part of me wants to keep going. I'll put it to the group. We follow you on this one, TJ. You know the layout. You know which way. Ooh. I'm going to pop a message to Jenkins. Status update. You don't get a response. Mm-hmm. Not yet. Okay. While we wait for the response, do you want to see what the texture is about? Let's have, let's have a cautious look at the texture. Cautiously, cautiously. Mm-hmm. Just, I want to come up to like just about where it starts to change okay. to get a kind of uh, just um, a, a look. And in this like flickering light, um, like halogens in like a horrid mm. apartment block. Uh, just give me a, give me a. I mean, you can give me a perception check. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. Um, what you see is like a visceral dark red brown mm. and fur laden explosion that you've seen before uh there is a um just hostoki all up this section of wall um jesus christ tj will just kind of like brace himself and make sure he's got it all on video um sorry tj Uh, we don't have time for sorry we need to go and i'm gonna come back Upwards, upwards, upwards. Cool. You start making your way to the next floor. You head up to, uh, so wall four is currently yeah. where the uh, terminal is. Um, and at this point, is there any way you're trying to get to? Are you going to start doing floor by floor sweeps or are you going to start? I think. Knowing that Jenkins would possibly be on the home floor. Oh no, but oh, 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 now here's the thing. Linda hadn't seen him for a while. Oh, which feeds into my theory that he's not actually here. Let's fall by for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um You go up to the next floor and you start looking around. Floor two is again very empty. All the apartments are either some doors are open, some doors are closed, and you just like peering through. It's clear. You then move up to floor three, floor four, floor five, floor six. Give me a perception check. Everybody can do this, and this will be on floor five and six. Twenty-seven. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty. And uh, Kaz rolls again in his twenties with a four on the dice. Uh, it's on floor five. You're like doing a quick sweep through trying to find things. You don't see any more blood splatters or anything like that. But you do see like fur marks where like somebody's been caught in a door or there's been a rush to get out or anything like that. Um, give me a survival check. Uh, whoever's got the highest survival. I bet it's Kaz. Plus Definitely. six. Plus four. Plus seven. Plus two. (laughs) Either give me a survival check. Uh, Eleven. Yeah, somebody was in a rush here when they got their fur caught in the in the door. Uh, It's like a a, a gingerish kind of fur. Um, Um, Looks like they were trying to get away. Uh, I'm guessing in a rush or some to get out of here. I think we need to go. Need to keep moving. Keep moving higher. You're going to take out a little baggie and put the fur in it. You said you needed it. It's on this floor as well. I bet you're going to be on floor six. Um, you start to see like a few of the apartments. Uh, and on floor six, it is. Uh, one, two. It would be over here. And it's where the uh, the doorway is. So all of these six here, uh, all of these ones here, and all these ones here. Um, 
you can see that like the doors are where the rest of them have been like opened and left or are unlocked. These ones have been welded shut. Oh shit! You reckon there's somebody in there? I hope not. Um, I want to knock on the door. Dun, 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 dun. So you like. Doof, doof. Hello? Is there, is there anyone in there? Give me a diplomacy check. Okay. With um, you just rolling into a pile of fucking dice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm... Dice Martin. Uh, 25. No, wait, hang on. That's not mass. 30. That's mass. <laughs> 30? You hear somebody or something, someone scuttle away from the door. Does it sound to Stokey? It's kind of hard to tell. It's a... Can we cut through this thing? Can we get it open? Can anyone get it open? Who cares? I mean, I can. Do we want to at this point? Could be some poor Hestoki in there. What if it's not? I'm sure we can manage whatever comes out. The four it, of us. Is it, I'd rather know that we've tried and made sure it's not someone we can save than leave them here to suffer in unless, unless it was something that was put in there with them. Mm, so... Mm. Why weld the door? They can't get out. No evidence. Or is it another experiment? If we Good. Are there cameras can in he... this place? Kaz, no? can you oh, cut like a little peephole? So we don't uh, let the thing out, whatever it is? See if Kaz has got those. I don't think I can do it with any cybernetics. So, oh, that's good our chocolate. <laughs> Let's get the brand, share it. You should do. You've become Christmas man recently. <laughs> Christmas man. Christmas man. <laughs> Lord Mayor's croupier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have. have so I don't know what that means. Things like a huge blowtorch on me or anything like that with what well, I can see in the, in the toolkit trackers and toolkit survival. Um, just the thing I could use my blades to try and get through the door but we can't get every single one that's as loath as I am to say it I, I think we need to carry on I think we need, we need to keep going whatever you say I mean I can always blow the door off but I risks more damage mm -hmm. to the structure than and it might work. alert <laughs> stand back <laughs> we're going to dynamite alert the door <laughs> any forces yeah. that were here more than maybe exactly. already um I, uh, onwards I think, onwards yeah, I agree All right. okay I feel horrible about it but onwards mm. Little seven hey you didn't do this somebody else did no but I left um, so did we <laughs> And obviously, like, for floor six, um, this is this is where the door is, mm -hmm. the tunnel entrance. So this is going to represent the tunnel entrance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so you basically, like, you would check floor six, come back to it, and then go up to floor seven. Mm -hmm. Floor seven, you can see that, like, these doors here are empty, and then there are a couple here that are welded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a bit mix match, but... Um, for survival check, remember, please. 12 17 26 there's definitely blood here Bruce. there are like splats like across like the walls in places um maybe like three four foot up the wall and then splatting across and outwards from there um it's not loads it's not like the place is just a bloodbath but there are the occasional like clearly like signs of a struggle yeah something being hit with a projectile um or do I see impact craters in the walls? 
No. Some sort of energy based weapon or a blade. Is it, does it look similar to what happened to Bam Bam? What happened downstairs was mm -hmm. with that explosion of something. This is smaller. Mm -hmm. You can all give me a medicine check. Oh, fuck me, that is gone out of here. 18. 12. 10. You got the 18? I did. Awesome. Um, so, put some things down here. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, You have been out in the world now for a while, but I'll do one for Kaz. It's a three, plus probably a million. Um, let's double check it, just in case it's higher. It's not bad, it's plus 12, it's 15. Uh, yeah. So today, between Kaz and you, mm -hmm. you're like, Kaz knows instantly what this is. And you put it together from what you've seen on your journeys. And I'm giving Alex a credit Okay. This is the residual effect of an energy weapon hitting something with matter. Um, you don't see those you. crater holes, but you do see um, the splats, like something's gone through. Um, something was shot here. You reckon this is Hestoki or something else? Hestoki. Beginning your way up again? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Floor nine. Um, you come up that door. More of the rooms here are welded. The majority of them are welded. Oh, shit. There's one or two that are abandoned. And then you hear a oh. from the tunnel, from the floor above. What oh. do you do in this moment? Looking Investigate. It the, looking it from the tunnel. Mm -hmm. Pistols out. Yeah. Yeah, blade. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You start running. You actually go, it, you realize you get to the next floor and. Um, he jumped the gun it's actually floor 10 the next one up from that but you go into the next one and you're like okay it's not here we need to run and you just hear like a, a muffled sort of scream of some some kind um floor 10 is could that please could i have that could that go where that was start it it's the closest thing i had all right <laughs> um protein recycler is here uh just so you know where um, you all need to be over here now. Same order. Formation, please. Formation. So we're coming sort of there. Yeah, as you run out of the tunnel. Um, Either were you in front or was uh, it Kaz? Kaz. Kaz was. I was behind sort of TJ, just kind of, so I've got an overlook. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not that big. Mm. I'm only little. As we're getting closer, as our goes, I just almost like light up my pistol uh, as I supercharge it ready. Yeah. Okay. My sword's just beginning to glow. Radiant. Okay. So, you only hear that one shot. Mm hmm. You run forwards. And now, as you run in, just give me a perception check. 18. 20, no, 23. 12. Okay, just do one. Kaz, smashed it. Um, 29. So, uh, you know? Um, you get the sense that somewhere off in the distance that gunshot echoed and you just hear something move but it falls silent again I'd like to take this in a loose turn order please okay but I hand over to you um oh I can take point sure Do 
Do you want me to move it? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So take it as if you were taking a turn in combat. Okay. So uh, you can move through your friendly spaces. Um, I'll be following Sophie behind. Can you move me 30, please? Straight behind? Yeah, even if I overtake on the 30, I think TJ is just going now. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Podcast listeners, I will make sure that a map of this goes <laughs> up. Uh, Kaz, straight up there with you. Mm-hmm. Um, stick to How right much movement side. Uh, his full movement speed of 30. Can I use this to dash and just kind of get to the corner? Yeah. On the crossroad and just sprinting in a straight line, and you can just fucking run straight to the crossroads. Yeah, just kind of stealthily, just kind of look left, look right. Okay, you dash in, you say. So yeah, yeah just straight up just the corner because you can run four times yeah. the speed, and then now you can give me a stealth check, but you are sprinting, so this is going to be at a penalty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll give you minus five to this for the sprint. Fifteen. Cool. Uh, and then give me a perception check as you look left, right, and ahead. Nine. Nine. What? <laughs> Dunk. Um, there are more of these splatters. A few more pools of blood. Something that doesn't happen with an energy weapon. All seems clear at the moment. Mm-hmm. As I see the blood splatters, can I make a life science check to see if they're fresher, depending on like the colour or how it's dripping? Yes. Uh, life science or oh, no, be life science. Uh, maybe more medicine. Yeah. Uh, Twenty nine. <laughs> Are you focusing on? The splats on the wall, the pools on the floor. Uh, more so the pool on the floor, because I imagine after a certain amount of time, it would soak through to the carpets or sort of change colour. And yeah, and that's what you notice is that some of them have changed colour. Mm-hmm. They are becoming more viscous, more old. Like a few days has passed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll run up. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll dash up to... Um, I will. Ch- I'll go past either. Yeah. So what's it? Sixty foot. Sixty. Uh, so. Uh, up there, or do you? Yeah. yeah, no. So I think straight. If we heard the shots from sort of down here, mm-hmm. that's where I'm sort of aiming. Also, as I'm going, can I? Uh, are there welded doors here as well? Uh, a mixed match amount of them. Um, the three that you've passed are. This one's not. Ooh. Are the are the doors open or are they sh- shut? It's like partially open. Don't tempt me, Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> no, TJ's still thinking about that shot. He's mm. he's just going. Um, Chaz will keep up with you. Um, uh, sixty. Yep, straight up to right next to TJ. Um, and he's like, whatever it is, we've got you back. I'll, uh... Something Jack would say. Clarky's <laughs> <laughs> like ear. Whatever it is, we've got you back. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> uh, am I? Yeah. I'm just going to go straight up to... Well, I'll just... Just here. Okay. Got the rear. <laughs> um, I got the rear. <laughs> Continuing on. Yeah. 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 I've closed the gap between us and. Are you taking over, Ida? Yeah, I'll run again. <laughs> so it's 16. And that's only if you're using your actions to move. Obviously, you can sprint it four times, but then you are fully, your whole action is just fucking sprinting. No, I'm just going to move yeah. to there. Yeah, I'm going to run as well. I assume Kaz does the same. Checking both ways at the crossroads to see if I can spot anything. Perception check as you look left and as Kaz looks right. Um, that is a 23. Mm. 
as you like move up to the corner and look around, uh, there is a <gasps> stone keep there. Friend. Um, and it's as you like go to look around the corner, um, you yeah, you have this moment where you're like, friend, oh. um, as it goes to bite your face. Ah, no, not my friend. <laughs> um, and I will describe what happens. Okay, it's only an eight to hit. Does not hit. Okay, so what we see in this moment is um, a few different things. So I'm just gonna bring up a soundtrack. Um, oh, it's so man. So um, you go to look around the corner and this just goes to like bite into you and you manage to like shove it back. Um, please, I'm married. I need you all to roll initiative for me, please. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's what's funny. Okay, so. Anyone? I go first. No, I don't know. <laughs> you probably do. Uh, less Okay, right, um, so uh, that is going to be this person. Uh, Caleb is out of it. Roos. Yeah. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> no, no, you're all good. You're all good. You're all good. Uh, Ida. Uh, Nineteen. Uh, Kaz. I didn't roll it in the tray, please. <laughs> Thank you. Nine plus is a million. <laughs> it's not bad actually. He's got a uh, plus three in that. Uh, so that's a twelve. TJ. Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay. It's that chair. The chair's fucked me. I'm gonna sit in it again. Plus two. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Oh no. You alright? Yeah, no. Is it a dirty twenty, yeah? Yeah. I've got a theory about who's here, and I don't like any of the options my brain's coming up with. <laughs> Good. Um, this thing, like, lunges at you, like, Ugh! push it back. Uh, Roosh, you hear that, like, instant, like, everything's been so quiet, so still, mm -hmm. and that pulse for combat. <clears throat> mm. I'm going to uh, attune. Yep. Uh, I'll attune to uh, Photon. Yep. As I see... TJ like jerk backwards. I'm gonna step forwards. So five, ten, fifteen. And I'm just gonna be like run up like with my pistol. Okay, so it is around the corner. It is trying to bite at TJ. I will give it partial cover to this. So it's gonna be a plus two to that um uh, AC. But give it uh give it an old shooty shoot. That is a twenty-five. 25 is definitely going to hit. Nice. Roll some damage. That is six piercing damage. Two seconds. Sorry, closed the page by accident. Uh, six, you say? Yeah. See his head go. <laughs> Come on, Hephaestos. Right, so. Come now. I really would like you to load. There it is. Uh, yeah, you managed to, like, you think you clip it in this moment, and very, like, aliens, where, like, it flashes mm -hmm. and then goes back to being dark as the lights flicker. Uh, you see this Hestoki take, like, part of a shot to the face. And as its head slowly comes back up, its jaw like hanging oh, up, oh, no. its eyes red, uh, and uh, just looks at you. Um, anything else from Bruce? I'm gonna use the rest of my movement. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. So it puts you behind TJ. Yeah, right behind. 
TJ, you are up. I think seeing what has happened to my brethren. Um, oh. Even then, no, I. True, I'm going to be true to my character here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and grapple it. Okay. Um, so. Grapple! Grapple! Uh, well. Combat maneuver! It's an attack roll that equals or exceeds the target's CAC plus 13. P- plus 13? Yeah, what is this? Hang on. So oh, hang on. KC plus 8 for a combat yeah. maneuver. Where's this 30 going? Oh, it's about pinning. Oh, yeah, so if the result of your attack rolls equals or exceeds the target's CAC plus 13, target is instead pinned. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, should yeah. be CAC plus 8, but if it's plus 13, yeah. it's. Um, okay, uh, roll it up. So is that just. Is that plus my. Uh, if it's a grapple, it'd be your athletics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you get to roll athletics check. Okay. Um, I'm not. It's not even in the presence of mind to do again. Natural one. Oh. <laughs> For a six. Man, I should do fumbles. Um, so that would be your action. Yeah. Um, for my. Oh. <laughs> Realistically, I don't think he's in the presence of mind to do anything else. Stay where you are? Yeah. Um, I think maybe st- we'll stumble back a little bit to try and like because this is this is horrific and he's very confused and doesn't like it at all so i'll move back to that oh it will get an attack opportunity yep. uh, as it goes to let's see which one it can do KAC. Nope. As it just like this like Hestoki like hand with these like slightly longer like claws now just like swipe out through the air if you go to run away. Oh no. Um anything Brother, from yourself. Stop. Um No, that's that's I think from Either Katoro. You're up, baby. Um with his pistol drawn and supercharged, he's going to try and make his. Will he be able to make his way through? Yeah, you can make way for your friends. Um, yeah, I, mean, I imagine they're like, yep, yeah, cool, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. As he kind of tries to get past Roos and that, he kind of just pushes off the wall. As you just hear his sonic pistol kind of just taking all this air as it's supercharged, you just hear up. So I am going to try and hit him. Swamp, 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 <laughs> Oh, what's that weapon out of Saints Row? Is it the dubstep gun? <laughs> uh, that's a 16 plus 8, 24 to hit. Hit. Uh, so. If playing Starfinder 2 e crit. Ooh. Probably not. So that's 6 plus, uh, so that's 6 damage plus 2 Sonic start with and then as my supercharged weapon is a single attack it's 14 damage on it so far by the way 46 5 8 10 11 extra sonic damage um how does this thing explode um as the sort of as it's supercharged and as the waves kind of just boom boom start pounding it low to the ground it just (laughs) flattens as it just leaves a little ring mark. And in this it. moment, while um, this thing goes down hard, and like you're like, ah! Like maybe like a little bit of tinnitus, and you're like, Meeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
And then where you are, these two doors, and the two opposite, which are welded, you start to hear like, mm. We need to go, we need to go now. Mm. Against them. Um, but there was a gunshot in here still. Mm. We go back to a loose initiative. Mm-hmm. Um, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say in Yasoki, um, if there's anyone in their right minds, we're here to help. Please make yourself known. If you're not in your right minds, I'm ever so sorry, but we must leave. Just here on those doors. <laughs> go. We've got to go. We've got to go. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah. Aim, uh, aim for the tunnels up. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so you're gonna go back to the tunnel and go up. Yeah. Not gonna investigate the gunshot. Just gonna put that out there. Oh, mm, I hate this. Could have an extra pair of hands. Mm. Okay, let's do it. Let's yeah. do it quickly. Um, can we barricade the doors in any way? Um, I mean, you're in a corridor. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the doors where these like loud bangs are happening against. Like, mm-hmm. can you get the sense of something's like not necessarily throwing itself against the door, but maybe I'm walking into it and then starting to get yeah. a bit more aggressive. Um. Yeah, those doors are, are holding with that weld for now. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 go. Let, let's go. Let's see if we can find yeah. where these shots come from. Okay. And I'm like just gonna say, gonna if Ross fucking Lauren has been eating my friends, I'm gonna be filing a complaint with H. <laughs> <laughs> I think a complaint is not quite enough. I think it's warranted. This requires more than a strong. You've not seen my HR complaints; they're devastating. <laughs> Um, regards. <laughs> Just a friendly reminder. Backspace is all kind. When, when we circle back to this. Give me a, um, while you're there, give me a perception from everyone. Either give me a medicine check, please. Oh, fuck me. 23. Ooh. 10. Natural 20 no. for a 31. Nice. Okay, cool. Very nice. Perception-wise, obviously this thing was coming down this corridor, mm-hmm. which gives you a direction. As Ida points out, there is a gunshot wound to its chest. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Um, I don't think normal uh, kinetic damage is going to do much to it. It looks like it's taken one to the chest, mm-hmm. of the best words. Um, and it was coming down this way, so has the gunshot come from... Is it in its front? Is it in its back? Is it trying to run? Definitely from its front. So it's on its front. Yeah. It's taken a hit face on. Okay. So can we assume that it would be... Coming from that yeah. way, yes. Then yeah. let us... Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will just say you can move up to the next junction. Cool. Perception boy can go first. <laughs> <laughs> come on, it. Specs. <laughs> Specs will make a perception check. Four on the dice. Four in a thousand. <laughs> One point one million. Uh, I mean, that is uh, plus 14. That's an 18. Um, so... There is a dead body on the floor. Uh, a humanoid dead body that is not Hastoki. Oh, are they wearing dead gear? Perception check. 20, dirty. Cool. Um, Who dies? I do a medicine check. So they are currently dead <laughs> outside half in this door here oh. um, Uh-oh. you can move up to them and do a medicine check if you so wish um, you see that the door is open um, the door over here for the time being mm-hmm. yes and as you're spending a few more minutes here the, the, those noises behind those doors start to quieten down again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, give me that medicine check 15. Uh, there are like deep lacerations to this uh, human's neck mm-hmm. and to like part of their face. Their uh, environmental protections, which was like a mask, has been like pulled askew. Uh, they have a Azimuth laser rifle uh, and they currently have, let's have a look at their equipment. So it is a, uh, they have an Azimuth laser rifle, yeah. uh, an Azimuth laser pistol, and an electro prod jolt. Uh, they are wearing defense team mm-hmm. attire. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Rish, you know this instantly. This like black tactical like SWAT like uniform. 
uh, like this resin style armor, but they're wearing like full like face mask and helm. Do I recognize this individual? Not this individual, no. Um, but um, check the data pad. Um, I meant check his data. I'm pad. checking my data pad as well because I'm waiting on some messages. Nothing on you. Um, this is fresh. This is like minutes old. Yes. Yeah. So and this is coming like, straight from the. But then also yeah. check his data. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, locked. Cool. Um, I'll take it with me just in case. Yep. For later. Um, it is encrypted. Yeah. Um, we'll work on that. Later. However, the room is open. Uh, give me a perception check, those of you who are outside the room. 13. 16. 8. Okay. Um, you see inside inside this room, this like 10 foot by 20 foot kind of uh, kitchenette area, there is like a makeshift ops room. Uh, you see um, a small portable data terminal uh, and then like a uh, supply crate which has got its lid off and open um, and then there are like a couple of uh, slots that you can see are for um, laser rifles to be recharged mm-hmm. oh, this may, looks like we should have a look, little look in here I've taken the uh, asthma laser pistol yep uh, rifle sorry yep. them. Uh, yeah, are you guys heading on into the room? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can see this like kitchen that has been uh, cleared out. You can see signs that like people have used this. Uh, there are like blood footprints uh, going in and out of the room. There's are like boots um, on the ground, uh, but the room is clear and um, there is this uh, data terminal, this chest, this like crate, even like this cargo crate, uh, which you can then also see has these. Um, areas that you would put a weapon into the side of it. Roos, just give me a uh, recall knowledge. You can do engineering or um, no, engineering, but it's a low check for you. 14. Mm-hmm. DC is 10. So uh, for you anyway. Um, so this is obviously like a makeshift defense team encampment. This is something that's uh, portable and on the go. Uh, that crate there uh, houses many, many batteries, which can either be taken out and used in weapons, or you put the uh, weapons into the crates when you are at rest time, and they recharge the weapons as a whole. It's basically like a moving armory. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a terminal there, which is obviously used to move from place to place. This can either be to log things, or it can be used to uh, retain orders or anything like that. Um, yeah, this is a small ops room. Seems like this place is some kind of garrison some weapons depot. I want to make a beeline for that terminal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And see if it's accessible or if there's anything on there that's of use. So it's currently locked. Okay. Um, Kaz, can you help me, please? Kaz yeah, says, go on. Kaz, it says it's locked. It needs admin. I think we're going to need Ren. Um, <laughs> he would never say that. Never. Who's this Ren you talk about? No, um, I mean, I certainly know my engineering skill, but Ida, isn't your... Yes. Computer hacking slightly more uh, afraid than if mine. If you don't mind aiding me, I can. Uh, I can also help. Yes, if you guys essentially man the keyboard, I can just data jack straight Control in. Control Alt to delete. It just drops to the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, are you just going to try going straight into it? Are you checking it for anything? Um, I'm going to first of all try and unlock it. First of all, You're straight into unlocking it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Give me the check. You get the automatic aid from Kaz. Mm-hmm. Plus two. And from TJ. Are you training computers? Uh, Is it a closed system, no. or would I be able to just go straight in? Um, I have to work out what that means again. Um, closed system is in. Uh, as in, doesn't allow like data access ports. Oh, so yes, it is a closed system. Yeah. Um, Kaz, have you got a? a, a can you uh, engineer me a little dongle for my data jack, please? It doesn't look like it's uh, up to date. Uh, I don't see any entry points on this. Um, this is a sealed unit. Um, we might need to make one. A little makeshift. Well, if not, should, do we try and access it first mm-hmm. via just hacking in, or do we? The what do we do? Way. Yeah. Can you do that? I'm better if I go 
connect to it. But can it's better you if do I it? penetrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, can you can you do the hand stuff? I, I can try. Uh, You've got eight from Kaz and DJ. So that's plus four. Yeah. That's a thirty-three. Okay. So um, you begin to hack into this terminal, um, and you are making very good progress. However, um, as you begin to get through, you start to hear those batteries in the attached crate. Oh, oh, oh. Um, as it is trapped, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Um, oh, there they are. Everybody in that room. A low roll. One, two, three, six. 10, 14 points of electric damage as all of the batteries in that um, unit <clears throat> and create like a field of energy around. Mm-hmm. Um, however, you guys and then um, realize that the batteries are now all depleted, but you do gain access to the system. Um, and with that, we're going to get to break. Uh, stress! Smoking! <laughs> we'll be back in about 10 minutes. See you then. We're back from Hello. break. A little cheeky waz, little touch of death. Mm-hmm. Thoughts, theories, conjecture, conviction. What's going on here? Some sort of 
pathogen security teams containing <laughs> cannot contain light fading <laughs> Baz Luren been eating the Hostoki for his own personal gain he's accidentally infected one of them my theory is Jenkins who's then been biting all the other Hostoki causing mass outbreak of vampirism in Hostoki Towers Shaun of the Dead situation mutation really close knit bite after bite spread through the tower like hamster fire Jack <laughs> um, actually. Uh, well, actually, I think you find that uh, the mechanic can stop finding it. Uh, you can't actually do that. Um, show me the ropes. Good for you, buddy. Um, <laughs> do it around. Um, yeah, it's. Um, I love that you guys had this plans going through the roof. I was like, oh, I, I like where this is going, especially if you flood the tower. Because um, that would make a lot of undead combat underwater very fun for me. Um, for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, which is why I was like, if I can crack on. Um, kind of upset you haven't done it now. Um, but, yeah. Um, I guess there's nothing to do but jump into part two and see what happens from here. As you, end, you get into this computer terminal, something that actually I got wrong... I need you all to make a reflex saving throw because you'll take half damage if you pass. No. Kaz is fine. He takes half damage. I got eight. You'll keep that 14. Yeah. Ten. Uh, you will keep the 14. 21. You will only take seven. Um, Kaz will also only take seven damage. Um, Bruce, for you, that must be a new feature that they are putting traps or some kind of booby trap onto their own equipment mm -hmm. you guys certainly didn't have that yeah but it's not unsurprising you know if you have to leave an option room something somewhere mm -hmm. that you're going to want some kind of um safeguard for it seems like they're taking extra precautions around here yeah exactly that uh however with that computer's check of a 35 you do get into the system and um a couple of things that you get out of it so the first thing is um There is like a, uh, it's not really a file or a tab or anything like that. It's just literally like a page that just says orders. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other page that is like, um, essentially like a log of the floors. Um, uh, I'll just double click onto the orders. Okay. Um, come straight up because you have root access at this point. Uh, investigate the tower. Sweep and clear room by room. Destroy any affected Hostoki before more can escape the tower. Find probable cause of batch issue. Disco investigate and discover if this is the epicenter of the outbreak. Roost is a pretty simple order layout that you've seen many times before. Mm. Seek and destroy. Right. This, yeah, and actually, with that one, this is recognition. Mm. There seems to be something spreading. Not sure if it's just through the tower or through the mall. They seem they're saying there's a batch issue. Is it tower by tower that's a batch? Is it tower by tower that's a batch? Uh, this batch is this tower is your batch. Mm -hmm. this... So you're saying that they were made this way? No, uh, we were we were made we were made. Well, there um, was, was this like a dormant thing going on here? It's or? not something that we picked up in any of my scans. Um, now, am I right in thinking, Ian, that most of this batch work in either legal? HR or marketing. Yes. Yeah. Um, You're also one of the earlier batches. Yeah. We're, um, we were sort of one of the first. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a little concerned about what I'm seeing. But, I mean, if they're saying it's something to do with the food source, surely by now I would be exhibiting symptoms. Mm. But you've been away have they done something to the food have they changed it is the recycling they've been doing if this, passing start, down? if this had started to happen before I left 
then I don't think so. I, I think, I think someone high up in the company has been chomping on the company meat. Mm. And I think I know which little fuckers brought it into the tower. Either way, we need to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, I understand this is not just your kind, it's your people who were, I hate to use the term, made with. Mm -hmm. I, I, we want to handle this sensitively as is, but obviously, I needs want must. to. If there are any survivors, get them out. And unfortunately, I think it is too late for the rest. Can do you see? There's a log to the floors. Is there yes. anything down there that we can that might help? Tab out. Tab to the floors. Uh, so what you see on the floors is um, it says floor one clear. Mm -hmm. uh, all the way up to uh, floor six um, contact. So floor one to six clear. Uh, yeah, one to five, then on floor six it says contact. Mm -hmm. Um. And then seven says clear. Eight, nine, contact, ten, contact. So are we on floor ten? Ten. Right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Floors. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. Contact. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Yeah. Fifteen. Burn pile began. Oh. Uh, 1617 contact. Eighteen um, is um, anomaly. Nineteen twenty clear. Uh, Twenty one anomaly. 22, 23, clear. 24, contact. 25, contact. 26, contact. That's where it ends. How many floors? More than that. <laughs> um, as you see, like I'm guessing it's like floor and yep, it literally says that. You, is there a way to access each floor to see? Or is like, no, it dialing, literally just like, like it's like somebody's typed in very quickly. Like, just it's brief, like, sort of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, field note more than anything, it is exactly a field note. Um, yeah, and this is basically going to probably bolster somebody's report mm -hmm. later on. Do I know which floor Bolo Willie lived on? No, because I never wrote that down. <laughs> cool. Then that that's that theory got up this fact, which is helpful. That's cool. Bam Bam um, was 21. Bam Bam was 21. Okay, that brings that theory back in. Um, <laughs> Sorry, floor one would have anomaly as well. Cool. That's helpful. Um, I wonder if the anomaly are Hostoki like myself. That have been um, displaying more independence mm. and personality, and if they think that that's maybe something to do with the epicenter or the probable cause. You think we should go and investigate these anomalies? I think it seems like the next logical step is to maybe try floor 18, mm -hmm. um, see if we can find said anomaly, unless it's already been dealt with, uh, and then afterwards. Mm. If they've managed to get to floor 26, that potentially means that there's the floors above are either untouched or, if Jenkins is being truthful, has been barricaded. I don't think he is. But I may be proven wrong, so keeping an open mind. What do we say, TJ? Floor 18. 
it's onwards, upwards. That's 418, yeah? Yep. Okay. Dally on. So, uh, oh, nearly. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was full circle, I liked it. Um, you then begin to, um, yeah, start making your way up the tunnels. Uh, are you just dead on sprinting? Are you. A bit of a huff on. I'd say enough that we're at speed, but not enough that we'd either be making mm. too much of a noise. I mean, that sounds like trying to have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking right, I'm going to have cake I, I would say, I would say maybe like, I don't think sprinting, I think going with purpose, not mm. dillying. Conviction. Um, conviction. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also still kind of like keeping an awareness of surroundings mm. rather than rushing through. Okay. Um, just give me an all round perception check as you guys start making your way from floor 10 up eight floors, please. Oh, natural 20. Very nice. Mm. 26. 27. Five. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> cars and what? Cars and what? 19. Um, you start making your way up, and it's around floor 15. Mm -hmm. um, Right, it's sort of floor 14, but as you get up to 15, the smell is quite pungent. Mm -hmm. um, for those who've been around death, mm. it's chewy. Yeah, it's it's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, you then you carry on up floor 16, floor 17. Again, the smell starts to dissipate out of the tunnels. You get a bit further up. Floor 18. Um, you would move out onto the same layout. Mm -hmm. um, Um, so to check something. So, um, you're gonna move those out of the way for a second, as if you were coming back up through that hatch over there. Is this floor would be the same as? Should we still there? there? Should be fine for the moment, because we can just loosely say where everybody is. Um, you tell me what you're doing. Um, I think. Aiming towards like the next tunnel, but I think more meandering in and out to have a little look mm -hmm. at any open doors, any signs of life okay. on this floor. Uh, and there are a lot of open doors on this floor. Um, so, something that you noticed is uh, there are now like drag marks on the floor, mm. uh, and they all lead to a room. would be this one here actually mm -hmm. uh, and you see 20 30 Hostoki piled up in there uh, give me a medicine check okay. 21 uh, the majority of them have two in the chest one in the head do mm -hmm. you see medicine 27, I'd be supposed to see the same uh, thing. Same thing. This is precision takedown. Two in the chest, one in the head. Um, however, um, that seems like a burn pile, not a, an anomaly. Mm. Unless they were the anomalies. Mm. Can I take a sample? Yeah. Um, I kind of take a, a sort of a bit of blood and a bit of like what I would imagine there being. Would there be any sort of like parts of fur around? I mean, there's bodies like, of. Yeah. It's okay, you can take whatever you need. <laughs> uh, TJ, mm -hmm. can you tell me what that picture is out in the hallway? I know what you're doing, Ida. I know what we I came just, here to do. It's, uh, I'm it's sorry, not worse I just, than what they've been through. Uh, do you want me to roll for it or. No. Cool. Rob in that one. <laughs> no, uh, it's very easy to get a sample mm -hmm. here. I mean, they're not doing anything. I know we need to. Um, oh, um. Kaz, can you process this DNA? Eda has. Find out if there's a pathogen in these ones. Uh, no, that's uh, something that we need to do in a, a laboratory mm -hmm. and say um, something that we can't do here on the go. Um, 
but we need to look for whatever that anomaly mm -hmm. is and match up what their field notes are to do we want to see if we can find another would there be another camp Bruce is that something that your lot would do uh, I expect they'll have some sort of uh, fortification on each floor keep whatever's in in and whatever out out bad something was, yeah. Is there anything around this sort of room that's got all of the Stokey bodies in, just in case they, like, left anything behind? Perception check. No. Seven? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a gore fest in here. Yeah. Um, being on that corner, everybody give me a perception check. Cows with a 20. Oh, fuck. It's alright, Cass has got you no matter what. Yes. <laughs> 16. 8. Okay. Um, looking up and around, so be. It's only because. I was right. If you guys put yourselves down. Just in front of that room. Mm -hmm. So any, you don't notice it to begin with because of the horrific sight in that room in front of you. But actually, you look at like the drag marks on the floor and what they've been through. There is also that same up the wall and onto the ceiling next to this door a little bit that way. Looking up this way, you can see on this junction is pretty similar. There's something there mm. as well. Um, same thing that you saw on floor one. And that you've seen before. Is that the anomaly? Mm -hmm. Do we need to take a sample of that, do you think? I'm better safe than sorry, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go up weapon drawn. Oh, just in right. case. Um, stay frosty. <laughs> Sort of film one, okay? It's fucking hilarious, mate. <laughs> I bloody love that. Um, I will approach it, sort of, sort of holding the gun, um, as well as my um, tactical knife. Okay. As we get closer to it, yeah, it's all on the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm just going down to get a sample as I'm getting closer to it. Cool. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can scoop up a sample. Give me a perception check. Nine. Oh. Like a little shoe. Oh, oh no! Oh! In the middle of this puddle. Just kind of off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I collect a sample. Yeah, you can collect a sample. Oh. Find anything else? I don't think it's your size, but I uh, found a shoe. Is it a shoe or a cowboy boot? <laughs> <laughs> one more and we have a pair. <laughs> Looking around, the other one is here. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, a, it's another... So two... Three in total. Three, three explosions. So you've got one in that, in that junction, oh, okay. one over here, and one right where you are. So yeah. three explosions. It would help get another sample if it is the anomalies sure. just to see if there is Kaz is like correlation but is this like a weapon is this is this what happened before here TJ I mean it to Bam Bam yes and I think I'll, I'll I've got footage and pictures of Bam Bam thing so I'll get them up to show everyone mm. um to sort of compare and it's pretty similar. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do I have to make a check to no. see if it's similar? Or <laughs> no. Or it's like, oh, there's a... you, all of you have now been in combat enough and seen this to be like, you know, something has exploded this creature, uh, mm. forcing like a high amount of pressure uh, to cause it to, you know, become a goo. Mm. You know, it's not just like they've and slopped, they've gone. Pfft. You know, this is a very violent reaction. Excuse me for talking rude. You guys don't have like a fail safe in you. I'm not mechanical. We okay. couldn't see one when we had us uh, had him scanned. Mm -hmm. um, everything we could find was organic. Mm -hmm. There was no trace of this AI that they said they were. There was no mm -hmm. trace of this 
being created, as far as scans can tell, they are a bi bioorganism. Mm. I just wondered if you had something in you that just, if you went rogue or... Unless it was, I don't know, mm. uh, unless something, I mean, I wouldn't would have passed them to have been experimenting us past the mm. initial awakening. So, um, I think we need to go mm -hmm. further up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the next anomaly was floor 21. That mm. was where Bam Bam lived. Uh, and I will just give you a recall knowledge check. 16. Yeah, uh, and uh, you go up there and the only one you can see is very old mm -hmm. and it's like almost like it's been scraped off the walls enough, mm -hmm. but there's enough there that you can tell that there was at some point where it happened to Bam Bam, yeah. but there's no other ones on that floor. Mm. Which means I think we're going up to floor 27. Could somebody roll me a d100, please? Roll the ball! Oh, I've never rolled one of these before. You're going to go forever and never stop, and you can't tell what it's rolled. Or is that like a little. You can find the divot on it when it stops. If it stops. Rolling that again. Uh, she she places it down. <laughs> a hundred. <laughs> Night seven. Okay. Ridiculous. <laughs> I would have thought it was like a little spirit bubble or something. Uh, uh, I take I that know. back. Uh, that is uh, my idea. And nobody. Uh... <laughs> TM. <laughs> okay. Tell me what you did. Uh, ghosts. Spirits. <laughs> Jenkins. Uh, floor 27. That's my... If, if the thing stops at 26, I think we need to go to 27. Yeah, the only way you know not. Um, no dillying. Skipping past everything. I'm just going straight up to 27. We're at 21. They said, well, they said 22 to 23 was clear, didn't they? Yes. Let's stop at 22. I want to stop at 22. Mm -hmm. Have just a quick peek. Okay. Um... I want to see, is there any, like, food that's been left? Okay. Uh, so, uh, start making a perception check as you go into floor 22, please. Yeah. Sorry. 25. Counts as a million. Let's have a drink. Cool. One. Just seven. 21. Five. Oh, easy. Um, either gets sucked into a turbine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just wakes up. <laughs> you start making your way through this floor. You see floor 20... 22. 22. Mm -hmm. Such. Um, there are a lot less um, welded doors here. There's like one or two, but not many. And also, as you start going through uh, all of these individual units, inside each small unit is like the eerie glow of like malfunctioning lights that barely illuminate the sparse furniture. The combined kitchen and living room are like eerily clean but untouched. There's a small island, cold and lifeless, in the middle. The spout over the sink still drips into a dirty basin, where the water has an unsettling metallic sense to it. The food storage is empty, save for long expired rations that have hardened into like unrecognizable lumps. Faint smell of decay lingers in the air. These apartments, once sterile and efficient, now feel ominous. The sound of distant echoes reverberating down those empty hallways. And the whole place carries an oppressive weight. As though something is lurking in the forgotten corners. Watching from the darkness. As we've gone room to room, is it a case of things have happened sort of like mid meal, mid sort of things like tables and chairs up properly, are they knocked down? Have you like is there scenes of a skirmish, a fight, a altercation? Or are they just all sort of put together? So you're seeing signs of rushed exit struggle. Mm. You're seeing um you know, 
there are no real chairs to be knocked over or anything like that because there are all these like stalls around the, the mm. kind of floating islands that are kind of stationary and bolted to the ground but things like you know the, the leftover remains of this like kibble mix it's like just gone stale and hard mm. and it's not like you know there's like people have disappeared there's been another drop mm. it's like there hasn't been another drop since mm. like um, people have either been out or people have been Can you take a sample of the water? Yeah, I do. I'm going to take a sample of the water. Yeah. Uh, a good and, sort of... And the food, even if it's bad, I think. Mm. Um, Fuck. Yeah, I'll Shit. take a sort of larger sample of the water because yeah. we noticed this tap's leaking, so it's going to have that. As I go sort of room to room, the things I'm looking for is if they've left in a hurry. They've been feeding us to ourselves. They've been feeding us to ourselves and putting it back in the protein recycler. So if someone got infected with something, or if someone mm -hmm. had been bitten, and it's gone, they've died and been put back into the protein recycler, it's going into the food and it's going round and round and round. That's fucked up. It's so fucked up, man. I hate Divertech. There I said it. You collect your samples. Mm. You find more splatters, and there are a couple of uh, places where you can see that um, there have been like bodies piled up. Not as many this time. Mm -hmm. It's only like three or four, and it's in like two or three rooms. Give me a recall knowledge check, TJ. This is just straight up. Natural one. Yeah. Cool. Um, what next, guys? Kaz is like, what's next, guys? <laughs> I'm having a great time. 27. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just straight through. Mm -hmm. um, head up. 23. 24. 25. It's almost like you're getting the sense of moving air now. Mm -hmm. Some kind of movement is happening. Where it's been still, you're just picking it up on the fringes of your kind of like perception. 26. And you hear more gunfire. Um, yeah, you hear as you get to 26 and you recognize it's up mm -hmm. on 27 somewhere. So what's the plan? Do we, do we, are we team defense on this one? Yeah, or? I mean, they probably got the answers, right? Sure, so they we're here to help with the Starfinder um, yeah. delegation sent to Back up. Back up. Uh, we need to know what they know. Mm -hmm. We can relay what we know just to kind of get some trust. Sure. I mean, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a really good liar. <laughs> I believe that. Mm -hmm. oh, you you shouldn't! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't like the faces that are happening over there. Can't have the form of it. <laughs> It's Maybelline. Out the head. <laughs> it's out of my head. Sean. <laughs> no, it's out of the tray. Yeah, I'm shedding like crazy. It's all stress. It's okay, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> while Ian enters the Matrix, <laughs> why don't you head on to double, double, double you dot warriorprince 3 dotetsycom and treat yourself to some high quality 3D prints. While you've done that, head on over to Roll and Play Press and use the code DRAGONBORN10 after using to the stars at warriorprince3d to get 10% off some cool books. Uh, one shot one, this is a pretty sick book. You should totally check that out. I'm finding that useful at the moment. Are you using it? It, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I just feel like it's both. It's really handy. Um, and then, well, uh, Loki Battle Maps, Death of Many Insults, also Dragonborn Industries. We've got merch. Cool. Um, I just need to get some checks like from certain things. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you hear that gunfire on floor 27, the floor above you. What would you like to do? How are we well, going to go up to these guys and address them? Hey, you guys. I think. <laughs> that I might just have a reasonable excuse that I can maybe pull out if needs be. I don't want you going in front, TJ. No, no, I don't either. I think I might die. 
I think you're oh, on site. <clears throat> I Expelled. got some <laughs> security team <laughs> etiquette I can display. Uh, uh, so if I come over you, I'm going to shot. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Uh, I slap Bruce on the back as your sword just starts emanating energy. Cool. Uh, it is supercharged. Ooh, nice. What does that do? Uh, as a single targeted weapon, you get 46 of your weapon's damage choice. Oh, shit. So if we do come across anything that is running away, you can quick dunk, knock it out of the park. Sweet. So, 427. The doorway, if I could have that, please. Here. Yeah. Pretty recycler. It's down there. Near it's just one step, please. <laughs> you tell me what you're doing as you come barreling out of this tunnel. Um, I'm going to address the security team. Um, Are they visible? Perception check. Natural 20 for a 27. 27. No, but you hear fighting. Right. Um, you think that um, some are off in this direction somewhere, mm-hmm. and you don't see them down this line, mm-hmm. and you don't see light coming from... Down. They're knee deep in shit. We need to let's go right go, now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so I do need to roll initiative for me, please. As we do that, I'm like T-dip there in the middle. Yeah. So, Bruce. 18. Eda. 17. 17. Uh, TJ. Also 17. Oh, okay. Um, who's got the best dex mod out of you two? Plus one. I think I'm plus two. Four. What's your dex mod, Roos? One. Okay, so how this works, because we've got quite a few combatants here. Ida, you are dropping to 16. Oh, shit. Uh, TJ, you are in at 17. Okay, Kaz. Oh, lovely. Eight. Good. And I need to. Ooh. Kidoki. Hold on to your potatoes. So it's a really interesting spread for a GM to be like, look at all those people with the same number. Um, Okay. Um, First thing that happens is you hear. That gunshot that went off, you run in, and then something in the distance happens, and I need to roll that thing. Uh, yeah, 20. Good for us, bad for us. You don't know. Who knows? Schroeder is 20. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I hate it. Well, you might love it. It's like Marmite, mate. No. <laughs> That's gone. Uh, okay. Uh, that's that one done. Then we've got uh, the next one. Uh, okay. Uh, Bruce, you're up. So, are we starting over? Yes. So, if I take your mini to begin with, I just throw more to here. Then I'll, so, I will say that Bruce has piled in up here. Mm-hmm. TJ is probably right next to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I can't see anything, but I can hear it. Yes, and you can't see anything on this line. Okay, I'm going to dash. 
straight for that first junction. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Don't get you there, but you can do a sprint, which is your full round to just get to there. Yep. Okay, cool. Full action is to just get all the way up to there. I'll give you a free perception check. Oh, dead. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. Um, you can definitely hear commotion coming out of these corridors somewhere. Okay. <laughs> it could be anywhere. Um, but that will have to be your full go, I'm afraid. TJ, you are up. Um, same thing. I'm going to run, catch up with Ruth. Yep. Yeah. Um, can I make a perception check? To see you can I indeed. Can? Full sprint oh, gets you there. I'll give you a free perception check. Uh, 23. Okay. You definitively... On your left, you hear like a grunt of somebody that's not like a moan of something undead or anything. Mm -hmm. You hear like a uh, bastard. Uh, you don't hear bastard, <laughs> I'm afraid. Oh. Um, but yeah, definitely down that corner. Um, I will then like, like this way. Okay. Um, that will be the end of your go. Ida, you are up next. Um, I'm going to sprint up behind and see. Can I get past? Uh, so okay. in a straight line, mm -hmm. you can easily go uh, 4, 22, which is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, we'll get you to there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got another 30 foot if you're going four times your speed anyway. So, but it's only in a straight line. I'm going to go there and just kind of look around. You need a perception check. No, that's cocked. Uh, 16. 16. Definitely some kind of commotion happening somewhere down in that yeah. direction. Uh, but you're not sure as to where. Mm -hmm. Next up in the order is somebody else, as you just hear this. Get back! Um, hits. You hear of a laser weapon being fired. Uh, that would be into that one. Okay. Uh, then, since that was up next, hits. Okay, it's not too bad. That would be on them. Next up is going to be. It's weird having a combat that you guys can't see. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this must be popping off over there. Uh, you hear a blood curdling scream. Uh -oh. Then you hear. Another sound of some kind of energy weapon being fired. And you are starting to see, those of you looking down that way, mm -hmm. the flashes of like red every now and again, like energies being fired like an azimuth laser weapon. Um, Kaz! Kaz number! <laughs> what have we got? <laughs> that away! Uh, yeah, he runs up to the edge, and then you see he can only sprint that bike, can't do anything else. Uh, Kaz would spend the resolve, though, to then bring out a sword. Sword? Uh, I am going to say that Kaz spends the resolve, because that is something Jack does. Um, RP. Do you guys spend the RP for him? Yeah. yeah. He you watch as he like, brings out this sword, uh, and then... You hear like a, um, and then like a, a, a loud thumping sound. Uh, and then you hear like the skittering of like something hitting something else. Um, Bruce, you're up, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna hear TJ go up left. And you and start then, to see those red uh, yeah. laser uh, things. Oh, I didn't um, attune, so I'll photon. Yeah, so you attune? Yeah, i uh, just sprint down that corridor. So, straight down the lane. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
Don't we get you near enough to the corner? Yep. To there. Can I? And if you're sprinting, so at that point, if you're spending all of your movement to run, um, then that'd be it. But you could take your movement and then spend a resolve to get 30. It'd be a little bit back on the corner. Mm-hmm. But that's up to you. It's if it get me a perception check, I'd rather do that. Uh, give me a perception check. You would actually, be, if you're just doing that, yeah. go one back, because that's where it would end. Ooh, that is a 26. Okay, there is the heavy sound of combat around that corner in this corridor. Yeah. Yes, exactly there. You can't see them yet, but you're hearing, like, things running and throwing themselves at something, mm-hmm. and then the other people, like, somebody grunting, and you hear this, like, catch back! Uh, yeah. And then you're hearing, like, uh, laser rifles go off. Um, there's definitely a combat happening around that corner that you just can't quite see. I'll shout, down here! Um... Uh, Shout down there. Okay. Uh, you all hear that. TJ. Uh, following suit, I'm going to catch up with Roos. Um, can I spend a resolve to get some more movement to get around the corner? So you would go uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Then you could action move 5, yeah. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Then you could spend your yeah. resolve points to get around the corner. Um, I'm just going to get myself here. Okay, cool. As soon as you go around that corner. Um, there is. One, two, three, four. Um, let's use you and you. So, you see There. You see these like two humanoid figures. One of them is like completely covered. Uh, wait, so you can only see the back of them, and they're sort of like firing a rifle into um, Hestoki. Uh, there are these like three Hestoki just like trying to like savage at them. They are just all teeth and claw, and they are just trying to like overpower them. The other person that you see uh, is no longer wearing a helm or a face mask, is a vesk. Uh, they are like green of skin, it's quite muted, quite dull, and they are just like... Don't you die on me! Uh, to the guy next to them as they are just trying to like pummel down with the back end of a rifle into the top of the Sostoki's head in front of them. Um, that's what you see! Oh, how fun! I love this! Uh, this good. is not traumatizing at all! Ida, you're up! Uh... 30, and then use my action to move. Thirty. Uh, that's all I'll do. Yep, cool. Um, next up, as um, you see this vest. Oh, it's not good. Um, oh shit, they might actually miss. Uh, six on the dice. Oh! No, it is just a miss. Oh, there's an energy weapon! It hits. It hits. Um, okay, cool. Right. <laughs> Look at the KAC. That one there. Okay, um, as they like shove back this uh, Histoki in front, like ever so slightly at the butt of their rifle, I just bring round to go Dish! with a, a round right into their chest. Uh, and this thing like, <laughs> and like arches back, um, like those like limp arms kind of thing. Um, they don't have anything else. Uh, then it's that one to go, one directly in front of them. Oh, that hits. That is a... Uh, you see, like, as it, like, rears back, it just latches into their thigh, and, like, it gets past some of the resin armor, and you just see this vest, like, ah! And they take a knee, 
and they look pretty fucking bloodied. Uh, and they like they look up with these like black obsidian eyes, like straight into this like Hestoki, which is now slightly taller than them as they're like trying to regain back up. Um, and it's pretty gruesome sight. Next up is gonna be this other soldier who's gonna shoot the one. He's like, Captain! Nat 20. Ooh. Uh, on the Ooh. one that's attacking the captain. Um, that is a... <laughs> the boulder is conflicted. Eight plus uh, seven plus modifiers twice. So that's eight, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Uh, that has This one? Yeah. Um, as like it bites this vesk, you can see him fighting like against these other two Hastoki, and the, he just turns around and it's just like Captain <laughs> puts a round into it and it just falls forward. It's in this like mid swing. Um, yeah, mm. they don't have another. They didn't declare full action to attack, but they do see a Hastoki running around. Cool. Uh, Kaz is up. <laughs> uh, he's actually going to do a Kaz thing. Go five to, he's going to sprint all the way up to here and make a perception check on that corner. Uh, cool. Um, sweet. Uh, then, next up is going to be number two. So, that is this one right here. Um, odds it's going for the captain, evens it's going for the other. Odds, so again for the captain. Uh, as it just lunges up and just goes to like bite against their neck. Misses as the captain's like, fuck off! Uh, and just like pushes it fuck against off. the wall and it like, bounces into the wall. Uh, then, number three, which is one behind, it's going to attack the Hume. Oh, that might hit. It's a 14 to hit. Uh, misses! As again, like it manages, like this human manages to like push it back slightly, and it's like they are being overrun. Uh, but now, who knows what's going to happen as you guys turn up? Uh, Roos, you're up. So I'm going to sprint around this corner. I'm going to use all my movement. Five, Five 10, ten, fifteen, 15 twenty. As soon as you're around the corner, you can see yes. these defense team members. You see a vesk you don't recognize. You see this other human. You see these two Hestoki attacking them. You see another one like on the floor, uh, like a body. Um, I'm going to use Stellar Rush. So as a standard action, I can read myself in Stellar Fire. Uh, when I'm attuned or fully attuned, I can substitute the Bull Rush for a melee attack. Yeah. So I'm just going to run straight into this guy. Yeah. And he's going to take 2d6 fire damage. Yeah, do you have to start to make a melee attack? Uh, I don't think it says. No, that's fine. No, it didn't uh, say. Rush in and then... Well, that's an 8 damage. So, okay, I'm trying to double check Bull Rush because... Is that with your sword or are you just... I literally like, like into charging into them. Okay. Uh, so... Stellar Revelation, Stellar Rush. Yeah, please do double check that. Yeah, just want to. Uh, as then actually you can wreath yourself in Stellar Fire, make a charge without the penalties. Yep, absolutely fine. So you still need to make the charge. That's the action that we need to look at here. Okay. So, uh, quick reference, and it is going to be uh, move actions, charge. Uh, charge is a full action that allows you to move up to your to double your speed, yep, and make a melee attack at the end. Um, and you can draw a weapon, draw and charge, yeah, that's fine. Uh, charging carries tight restrictions. Cool. So basically, you get to make a melee weapon at the end, and I think oh, sweet. you okay. still get to add that 2d6 damage if it hits, okay. basically. Um, oh, it's, it's substitute a bull rush for the melee attack at the end. Yeah. That's what it is. So now we need to look at bull rush. Hey. <laughs> Forgotten which way around this one way was. Combat maneuver, there it is. Uh, bull rush, uh, you knock the target back by 5p plus 5p additional. Uh, so you do need to make an attack, you need to uh, beat the target's KAC plus 8. Uh, that's 3. Uh, what is my. It's your melee. Be a melee, melee. Uh, that would be a. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> that is a 12. It doesn't quite beat it, oh, yeah. I'm afraid. Um, it beats its AC, but it doesn't beat it plus eight for that particular uh, attack, I'm afraid. So we need to work out whether or not that then gives it half damage, or if that is... I 
think if it it's half damage if it succeeds a reflex. Uh, target two d six fire damage reflex regardless whether you succeed the damage. Is, okay, cool. Uh, if you attempt this ball rush, the target takes two d six fire damage. Uh, so I get a reflex save. So yeah. it does take two d six. Eleven. It's not high. That reflex save is a plus two for a thirteen. Uh, which will be against your class, which is going to be... I think that's a fail. Sweet. It's going to take the 2d6. How much is that? Uh, I rolled 8. 8. Okay, nice. cool. Why is that? I'm not playing my music. Don't crash on me now. It's fine. We're going to go from there. Uh, eight points of damage on that one there. So let's have a quick look. At and then I'll just shout, Y'all need backup. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Uh, it looks bad. It's like like the stellar flame <laughs> like burns across it. Should we double check Twitch before we mm -hmm. carry on? Yeah. I don't like that the music's crashed, but I like that. It looks like it's still going. Awesome. So. Guys, if you're at home and you're listening, do let us know if you can hear us and see us because my computer is saying it's doing a million and one things. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, right. We might be doing it without music for this last little bit then. Yeah. I don't want to uh, fuck with it. <laughs> Stream is all good. Okay, Yaz has texted me. It's okay. Uh, so, uh, that one looks pretty badly hurt. That would be the end of Roosters Go. TJ, um, you're up. Um, I'm going to, seeing that this guy has clocked me, um, like, I'm clean. I'm not from the tower. And I'm gonna take out my new micro, my new wireless microphone, and with tears in his eyes, and I'm gonna flavour my move and my action together, if that's okay. As long um, as it's within the remit of the rules. It is. <laughs> uh, I am going to use my getem to basically inform my action with this, uh, and I'm gonna target the um, the one engaged like in the middle of yep. this sandwich here. Um, <laughs> sail on, silver bird, sail on high, as my get em, and also then my sonic action of microphonage. Um, yeah, that's definitely doable. So it's 16 to hit. Hits, EAC. It's eight points of sonic damage. And it, it like cracks the back of its skull. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier than you'd expect it to be. Mm -hmm. As that one, feel free to knock it over or take it off, is no more. Uh, this Vesk, who's like, <sighs> nods, and then it looks like they're going to stand up. Uh, that's movement and action. Anything yeah. else? Um, crying's free, so I'll just do a lot of that. <laughs> Ida, you see a singing pasto. Could you want me D100, please? Um, what, me? Yep. Ooh. <laughs> Um, 17. Yeah. Uh, okay, so as you do that, the um, Vesk is like, less noise. Oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Either it's your go. Uh, I'm just going to move into sort of line where as I come round, just locking eyes with essentially the armoured unit, I just kind of lift my wrist up and you just see the missiles just go straight up and along the roof and just <sighs> straight down into the back of the Stoski's skull. Yep. Um, roll the damage. Nice. Where am I D4? Four. Uh, four. Five. Six force damage. Okay. Um, uh, as this one looks up. 
pretty bad, but not all out. Um, the is that the end of your go? Yeah, that's okay. the end. This Vesk is like <laughs> goes to stand up, and they look fucked as they like turn around and will just move up to uh, in line with this uh, Hastoki. Okay. Yep, uh, and then um, they can't draw anymore because they've just spent their movement turning around. Uh, they're never on arm though. With their claws, they just go for the upper clut. Upper clut. <laughs> <laughs> Where's, Where's the book? No, Where's, the book? Where's the book? Where's the book? Where's your book? Where's your book? Upper clut. They just go with the upper clut. <laughs> uh, and they literally like go to like render. Uh, the face of this is Uh They are looking pissed the fuck off. Um, Read your dice. Campaign dice! 12. Plus, it's definitely going to hit their KAC of 12. Uh, however, it's only a D4 for the claws, but they do get proficiency, which is, uh, they get to add their strength modifier to that. So let's roll a D4 on here. Two plus two for four damage. Uh, what are they? I did my part. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do shit. I think actually, like what you see is this, um, what should be a killing blow, like uh, somebody ripping the throat out of somebody, mm-hmm. and it does, and this thing stays standing, and mm-hmm. she's like, okay. <sighs> <laughs> um, I definitely can't do that. They will carry on moving uh, five, and then it will get an attack of opportunity. You keep your eyes on me. Uh, it hits. Oh, it hits. Uh, and she's like, you keep your eyes on me. And like, it's this like confidence of like, obviously trying to like get it to be distracted and it goes for her. Oh. And um, it just pounces onto basically her neck and Ooh. sinks in and you see like the look of shock in this Vesk's eyes just like these black white eyes widen mm-hmm. and they fall back mm. um, <coughs> um can you put them down please oh my gosh <laughs> um, they had two hit points left and that was three hit points to damage oh. uh okay um that one's gone. You guys have seen to that. We want the music back. Really annoying. Uh, Kaz. (laughs) 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 Holy grail. (laughs) He doesn't quite make it to the corner. (laughs) The slug out of Monsters University. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And also this other, uh, he's like, Captain! We'll go to uh, shoot at this with mm. always an energy weapon. It hits. Okay. Mm. Two points of damage. <laughs> it takes another shot, and it just like it goes through its shoulder and like, out the other side, mm-hmm. and you see that blood splatter go across the wall that you'll re- you recognise from oh, earlier in the thing, mm-hmm. and you're just thing. like mm-hmm. it goes. And it's like teeth are like fangs, and it is just this acrid. And he's like, no, um, it's it's go, and it pounces. Um, this is bad. Oh, it misses though, mm-hmm. as uh, it pounce would put it on the other side of it, so next to Roos uh, and it. As this guy, oh, yeah. yep. So he basically, <laughs> it goes to like, it like lunges forward with this like ungodly speed, uh, and this guy just like shoulder rolls out of the way as it lands like skidding between you two. Uh, Rush you up. Uh, as it jumps right in front of me, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna have to put you down. <laughs> Great. Sorry, old boy. Uh, and then I'm just going to use my solo weapon. Do Sleepy I still get the? Did I expend the? Um, Look at the uh, vest. Did it say rush you Look at the vest. But attuned or? Or? No, sorry. The um, the the boost that. I know because it's still in your sword until you use it. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Right. Use my solo weapon. Uh, that is a dirty twenty. Hits. Um, so it's going to take. 
1d6 plus 4. Sorry, 1d6 plus 14. So that's 15 plus 4d8. 15. Just off the board, I think, right? Yeah, 16. it's got 15 hit points. Um, <laughs> For 29 damage. Okay, and with that, um, I mean, how do you eviscerate this creature? There's nothing left. Like, the, the fucking, the gore just fills the corridor. Just, and that's it. Um, leaving a mark unlike you've seen elsewhere. Uh, this uh, defense team member, like, rushes over to, like, like claws across the floor, like across the bodies of the stoky to like this Vesk, who is like, <coughs> and like, he's like, no, 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 no. And she just like, her eyes roll back and he just like, shit. And he like slumps back against the wall and like his rifle like hits the ground. And he just like, this like, it's, he's wearing like a full, like, essentially like a gas mask kind of thing. It's like this um, metallic respirator and then it's like dark visor in front. And like, you just see, like, the helmet and the head turn towards you all. Fuck. Uh, and that's probably where we'll end today's Ooh. session. Good. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, the music cut out, guys, at home. Uh, hopefully, we can finish the end of this stream, and uh, it's not going to go to awry. Um, but we'll be back next week, hopefully with a jack in tow, to see what is going to happen inside this building. Um, cool. Anything you'd expect was going to happen? Well, once things started to take a turn, I was just filled with anger and... Oh, the bastards! <laughs> having some strong words with certain members of Dynatech. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess... Um, that's it for today's session. Obviously, keep an eye out for anybody who's watching today or tomorrow. Uh, we're going to put out a Halloween uh, special uh, called Death House Redux, which James ran. Uh, that's going to come out on Halloween night at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also put it up on YouTube after the fact, uh, probably like on the 1st or something like that. We've, on the 1st, got a live show at Happy Piranha. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's also going to be the first of the Wasson Cornwall interview series coming out uh, this week as well. Oh. Um, I think that's it from everyone. Has anybody got anything else? Uh, we've got Blood Punk starting on the 14th. 14th, we've got Blood Punk starting as well. Uh, it's Jackson a DMC for that, which mm. is really, really cool. Um, but until then, you all don't got to stay here, but may those dice gods be ever in your favour. We will see you next week. Take Bye. it easy. Bye. See you later. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye now. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> the computer's crashed streaming! Ah! Oh no. no! That's weird! Quick, let's make a favela! <laughs> uh, if we're still streaming, oh, no. uh, I guess I'm about to cut this off. So, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Bollocks. Yeah, I just said lol, so uh, I literally can't turn it off. Oh, I'm clicking God. it. Eternal stream. Yeah, uh, wow. Uh, Look at that. Um, well, well, well. Let's see what happens hitting close, eh? Okie doke. <laughs> How's your guys' date going? <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> oh, the things that happen. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to hit the power off button on the computer. Hopefully Twitch should recognise the end of the stream and I'll be able to transfer it all across from there. Um, wish us luck. Uh, Bye. Bye. Godspeed. <laughs>